We are here. Episode uh, 12. It's too early for me not to remember what episode it is, but uh, yeah, Mitchell Squared. Uh, Mitch Turner has been fired, and he has been replaced with uh, Ryan Rosicki. So uh, welcome, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being the new co-host tonight. Uh, how do you feel for uh, taking over Mitchell's spot? Um, well, it is what it is, you know. You're right. It's a job. It is a job, yeah. We, <laughs> I mean, we put up the job application. You saw it. You jumped in. Um, yeah, man. Our first guest. We're happy to, to have you on here tonight. Um, how you feeling, man? How you been? Well, I'm just laying low, freaking uh, waiting for a uh, word of another fight, which I got. I put a yeah. little sneak peek up there on Instagram. Yeah. I think it was yesterday or day before or something. But, yeah, should be fight back in the ring soon. I saw that on the uh, the Instagram story. When you post up stuff like that, do you get, like, do people start messaging you right off the bat? And, like, oh, they're yeah. very. Yeah, I usually get, like, a bunch of messages. Like, Who are you fighting? Who are you fighting? Yeah. And I can't can't release that yet because I yeah. don't know. But they're, they got, like, a couple opponents they're trying to work out deals with. But nobody signed yet. But I think I'll be, it'll be a tough fight, that's for sure. So during the period when you don't necessarily have like a fight, I mean you 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 know that you have something coming up, and as you always would. But uh, what is your like difference in training when it comes to when you know there's a date and you're getting closer to that date in comparison to just what you would do in between fights before well, you like, may have something coming up? I'm always training. I train like all year round. Never stop. I haven't stopped training for the last eleven years. Like there hasn't been a day that gone by that I haven't done something right. But like. Normally, like, I'm running in the mornings, doing my boxing workout at night. That's just an everyday thing. Mm-hmm. But then when, like, the closer, say, I get a fight schedule to, say, what's the date now? June, September, which is, the, that's that's supposed to be the date I'm fighting sometime, early September. So I'll start ramping it up. Like, now I'll start doing long-distance runs. Like, Yeah, I saw that today you were hi- yeah. you were running up a mountain in yeah. Wicogama. Yeah, it's up in Wicogama Mountain. So, I, yeah, I'll start doing that, running the mountain, doing, like, 10Ks just to, like, build up the long-distance endurance, right? Focus on that. And then when I'm hitting the bag and doing my boxing workout, same thing. I'll box. I'll hit the bag 15 rounds. Whatever I'm doing is just, like, really long, mm-hmm. but not too intense. You know what I mean? But then when the fight gets closer, the workouts will get shorter and, like, just everything. Like, I'll hit the bag six rounds, but, like, try to kill like try to literally rip the bag in half right. i'll run i'll run like only 30 minutes but i'm doing like out of that 30 minutes 20 minutes of it is just everything i got sprinting so it's like you, you build up that really explosive endurance but you can't do that all year round because if you do you'll get injured for real you, yeah like That's if you fact. if you go like ball to the wall all year round oh that makes sense your body you would, will just break down yeah you know what i mean so like i'm saying like so right now it's just building up that long distance stuff. It's like almost like building the foundation mm-hmm. before you put the building up. Yeah, you know what no I mean? doubt. Yeah, um, yeah, because I would imagine. Well, I got to see that firsthand when we did that uh, music video that you basically were the well you starred in um, around February of last year, and that was before you had a fight. You like you were that was like a week prior to yeah, the, that was like the a fight week. I so think. that was like an actual that was like getting to see what that training session was like. Yeah relatively close to fight day yeah for sure you can see when i'm hitting the bag in the video yeah i was actually like trying to kill the bag <laughs> no 100 percent. like we were just so happened to be just like using you as a prop for that music video basically yeah. and you just we, it was just essentially like we weren't we could have not even been in the room and that would have been what you were doing regardless right like yeah that's it that was the uh the training set yeah like and that's crazy because i i i like to go for runs i go like a six kilometer run but i like i will walk in between and shit like that because my cardio I, th- I think my cardio is is decent because i used to play soccer and shit when i was in junior high and stuff and but i feel like when you're doing these like 10 kilometer runs and you're cl- you're running up these fucking mountains and shit do you stop at all like that's like that's what, that's what i think of no, when i'm watching that like never that's wild dude never never stop during a run that's yeah. like one that one thing i can't do like it's stop I, during a run you you'll, stop. you'll obviously slow down the pace and try to just maintain like a really slow pace to give yourself like a breather and then yeah well i wear yeah. um i wear a fitbit right now watch that so i'll, mm. I'll keep an eye on my heart rate because i got like i got a bad heart you got been you showing me that before i yeah. got a bit of heart damage so like just from training from so for so hard for so long my heart like kind of like overtaxed you mm. know what i mean so like, like a murmur or whatever you call it so like it will stutter and then i'll like get dizzy oh wow so like i got like in the middle of running or middle of running yeah. middle of a fight just sitting here sometimes like my heart kind of does it so does its own thing sometimes but like i'll keep an eye on the heart rate so if that goes above like 
180, mm-hmm. then I'll I better slow her down. Because if I hold it at 180 for like more than a minute, then that's not not good. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no. man. Fuck. Well, um, have you sa- have you had that happen during a fight? Like, because obviously you don't have the mm. Fitbit on when you're in the ring there no i i don't it's it'd be too hard to tell right i wouldn't even notice yeah you know what i mean unless i collapse right yeah you're in a completely (laughs) different element there like i'm sure it's happened but it couldn't have been too bad you know Mm -hmm. i would have i would have blacked out so you said for the last 11 years so what you're 26 right now yeah so you started when you were 15 15 actually no i started when i was 14 okay i had my first fight when i was 15 right first amateur boxing fight but like i started training when i was 14 so that's 12 years so what made you decide to go to, like a, what would you like a boxing? Oh, train, like that's a, a good yeah. one. So what was uh, the story behind that that made you go that first day? I'll, I'll go way back. So like I grew up Sydney Forks, in between Sydney Forks and Howie Center. Mm-hmm. Like there's a trailer court in Howie Center, the uh, Curry's Trailer Court, or whatever it's called. I'd be either living there or at my grandparents down the road in Sydney Forks, and like. I never had, like, no friends or nothing growing up in school. Never talked to nobody. And I had, like, the long hair down over my eyes. I was kind of like a weird kid, right? <laughs> Man, I wish you were still <laughs> rocking that to this day. Oh, yeah. And I like, think people would be, like, even more intimidated. Probably. Fucking, you can't even see your eyes, dude. But, like, I used to, like, not... I wouldn't talk to no one, right? So, finally, I got a buddy, Anthony Mraz. Give him a little shout-out. He was, shout like, out my best, best friend in uh, junior high. And he lived in Sydney. So, he's like, Ryan, you got to, like, you got to get out of Sydney Forks and come to Sydney. I didn't even, like, go to Sydney to hang out till I was, like, fucking 14. Okay. So, like, we go there and we're hanging out. We're, like, walking around. And that's back then. You got to remember when I was 14, 15, that's pre-social media, pre-cell phones. Like, we didn't even have cell phones. We might have had, like, flip phones. What was it, like, 2006, maybe, seven? Mm, I don't know, but it's it was like this, every, every kid had a cell phone. I remember I was in grade six and I wanted a cell phone bad. That was yeah. like 2008. Th- there might have been yeah. Facebook, maybe. Yeah. But I don't think many people were on it. Like I wasn't anyway. Yeah. So like I, I was just like walking around like in the real world. You on MSN? Then. I don't know if I was on MSN. Yeah, maybe. Bro. But anyway, we we like I started getting into fights right like right away. Me and him. Well, as soon as you started, you like migrated to Sydney and yeah, then just and started like, beat, oh, fighting, fighting people. Freaking right, because like I grew up in a fighting family. Like I'll fight, and anyways, so I started fighting and like had having no idea. Like they talk about punching power being a gift, like it is. Like if you're born as a heavy-handed puncher, like you, obviously you could train and get better, good shape and all that, but like power is a natural thing. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know I freaking had it, like right. devastating power. So I'm like a freaking scrawny ass 14 year old going around fighting and hitting people and like hurting people badly like real bad getting into trouble and you were unaware of it because you saw other people get into fights i'm sure there was kids being assholes to you and stuff and you were just like this is how i'm gonna defend myself like were people were people like approaching you and talking shit to you and you were like fuck it we'll fight oh yeah and you just weren't aware that it was a little bit more serious when you would get into that fight that's it right actually my buddy anthony started catching on he's like ryan man like you're like you hit people and they're not getting up. Like oh, they're staying down for a long right. time, sleeping or whatever, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, well, what yeah. are these kids today? What's that? I, I'm <laughs> sure there's a few out there. Probably must be bragging them. about it a bit. Like, probably. Oh, man, I got knocked out by Ryan Rosicki before he even knew that he. No doubt. Had that. Power. But anyway, uh, like um, so lots of fights and then I started getting charged, right? And then I got kicked out of school and like, whatever. So what grade was that? Oh Jesus! I got kicked out of school grade eight. Where were you going at the time? uh, Junior high, where was that? Malcolm Monroe. So I got kicked out of Malcolm Monroe twice, and then they had to send me to Southside. So I did, I went to Southside for like half a year, and then they put me back into, I was supposed to be in high school. Then they threw me in high school, grade 11. Well, fuck, I didn't take long. I got expelled from there. (laughs) I got expelled from RHS. What, for fighting? For fighting. That was the reason why you got sent to, and Southside is like the school that, People get sent to like if they're misbehaving at their regular yeah. school and they're failing grades and all that stuff. What yeah. was it like going there? I was just curious about that because I knew a few people that that went to Southside. Like it was just like a general school. Like man, we made arts and crafts. <laughs> <Yeah. hung out. laughs> that sounds awesome. It was the best I, get, I should have got expelled. And then they t- and then they jumped you up into the grade you're supposed to be in because I kept getting. Like, so you weren't necessarily doing like the grade eight, nine, ten like standard curriculum. No, it was just like we'd stay here, you do your thing. That they would do at the school. And- Paper mache you, and you fucking well. excelled in paper mache. <laughs> oh, all A's. That's huge, man. But anyways, and then uh, yeah, I got kicked out of high school, and they were gonna let me back in, 
and at the at the time I was dealing with some charges, so some assault charges. I don't know for fighting, and uh, the judge was like wanted one of my conditions to be join a sport. He told my dad like join a sport, get him in something, get him in hockey or something, so we'll keep him out of trouble for Jesus' sake, right? So my dad was like, well, you want to try hockey? I was like, eh, not really. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, my my buddy is a boxing coach down at the Sydney Boxing Club. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll try boxing. I didn't even know what boxing was at the time, right? So anyways, went down, and I remember I trained, and I ended up sparring one of the Whittle brothers. I don't know if you ever heard of them, kickboxers, the Whittle brothers. Mm-hmm. They're from around here. And one of them caught me with a body shot, and I was just like, oh, God. Like, when you get hit with a body, man, it literally, like, takes your life away from you. Like, it's bad. Mm-hmm. So I was like, hit with a body shot, and I, like, got out of the ring and I'm like nope I'm not doing this I'm not boxing <laughs> yeah. and like I was like take me home so I went home and like I thought about it for a while and I was like I gotta go get him back that fucker like he he got me with a shot to get him back right and I went and I just kept training never did spar him again but like yeah and that's do you ever want to spar with that dude again just to no I actually spar with his son now oh no doubt <laughs> yeah actually you get your revenge on a kid oh, a little bit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt um, yeah. So that was so that was the basically the reason that you were brought to begin training and everything was because it was literally mandatory by a judge. Yeah, they were like, you need to put your son in a sport right now because he's causing some some mischief yeah. out here. Well, there you go. The justice system works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> doubt. I mean, it basically paved a whole lane for you as a career. So yeah, um, I mean, thank God you went back the next day. I mean, in a sense, I mean, when people say as cliche as it sounds, like everything happened for a reason i mean you were getting in these fights for even though at the time it was looked down upon for mm-hmm. a reason for you to be kind of placed into the position to begin training as a as a boxer and everything so it must have not taken you that long to begin taking it a little bit more seriously because i remember you know, when i started doing music and everything there was never a period where i was just doing it for fun mm-hmm. like i knew as soon as i started doing it i was like i want to be able to take this as far as i can be able to take it so was that was there ever a time where you're like i just got to I'm doing this because I was told to do this by the judge or like after that moment you went back, was it you were kind of starting to realize that you were passionate about? No, it took this. a while. Yeah, it took a while. So like it, it in the beginning, it was just pure rage. I was on, like, I was just like mm-hmm. fighting and boxing, but I was still fighting outside boxing for a while. Right. Like I was still like, involved in lots, right. and lots of street fights. But like and what was the reason for that? Was I it just don't know, man. It was just like. Once you start getting a little bit of a name, mm-hmm. there's always somebody. Like, I could beat, like, I don't know, let's say I go and fight the toughest guy my age in Westmount. Mm-hmm. Beat him up. Well, then the toughest guy in North Sydney wants to fight you. Right, they hear that up. you beat up the toughest guy in Westmount, yeah, and then yeah. word spreads. That's what happens. Right? There's always somebody. That's crazy. Always somebody who wants to challenge That's you. That's crazy that even anyone even wants to take the energy to, to do <laughs> that. It's like, oh, have like, you seen Letter Kenny? <laughs> There's a TV show, Letterkenny. It's from Ontario. There's literally an episode of the show where that's it. Like, this guy Wayne starts fighting again. And, like, once he starts fighting again, it's like all the tough guys are like, okay, you think you're the toughest guy? Okay, end of the laneway. I'll fight you out there. No DGENs on the property. Yeah. And he just fights him at the end of the laneway to prove he's the toughest guy in Letterkenny. (laughs) I was like, that's so far-fetched, but you're literally describing that. No, it's it's just, like, masculinity on, like, a whole other fucking level. Egos. Like, big egos. Let me protect my ego. I need to make sure, oh, like, because people will probably know that person as, oh, that person is the toughest person. No one can can beat them, so they got to challenge you to kind of keep to uphold that image to their friends and shit that's all it is that's all fighting yeah. is it's all just ego man it's just a bunch of freaking dudes and women with, with egos that yeah. just want to beat each other i like it included women too yeah oh yeah uh, there's a lot there's women fighting yo 100 yeah. percent. yeah take me out man yeah i wouldn't freaking yeah i'll know 100 percent. shout out to all the the female fighters out there but anyway so you get you get into it so like how how long do you think it took for you to be co- like to start realizing like oh there might be opportunity for me in this sport that I could kind of, you know, put my life on a more positive mm. lane. Well, I didn't think that I was capable, to be honest with you. Like, when I was wa- when I fought, like, as an amateur, I think my record was 10 wins, 11 losses, or 11 wins mm. and 10 losses, something like that, right? I'd win one, lose one, win two, lose two. So I was like, I'm a, I could fight, but I knew I always knew I could fight, but I didn't think I'd be, like, any good or, like, top in the country or anything, right? Right. So anyway. Which you now currently are in yeah. your weight class. In the world. What's your ranking now? Um, I saw it was twenty two. Twenty two in the world, yeah. I don't know. I did. I'd have to I, check I, I, I did. I did the whole in. Google. I did the whole <laughs> Google before. <laughs> I don't pay attention to the to that stuff. Mitch is also here, by the way. Yeah. So Ryan has yeah. not officially the, taken over the spot. Squared. Yeah, we're officially squared. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, okay, so you're so yeah, how long do you think it really took for you to Okay, so you're you're yeah. you're fighting amateurs, so like when you got put in this boxing club, which where was it? Like was Sydney. it in, in Sydney? Sydney boxing club, Brad Ross was the head coach there. Yeah. Uh his daughter was fighting too, like so they they were always having fight cards and stuff. So I'd fight on like fight cards all around Nova Scotia right. as an amateur and then but at the same time I'm still going out and partying with my buddies and fighting. Right. Well, fun fact, I remember the first time I ever met you. I don't even know if you remember this. Also, is he? are we picking him up? I just noticed. I don't know if the mic is fully coming around. Okay, sweet. Um, <laughs> when we were still in high school. I don't yeah, know, I, was I was there. I was there. Yeah, too. no, it was us two. It was, uh, <laughs> do you remember Todd? I don't know what happened. Shout out to Todd, wherever he's at. These he's days. he's working security at Todd Abbott? Yeah, Todd yeah. Abbott. He's the man, yeah. Yeah. Remember yeah. he had that I place? Him. Yeah, 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 he had so a place in the pier. And we were there in like 12th grade, and I think that uh, like we needed to go to the liquor store or something. And yeah. he was like, oh, my buddy Ryan's coming over or something. I must have been 19, was it? Yeah, yeah you, well, I don't know if you. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you did the. The gray area purchase, or if you just drove us there. I know that you were definitely driving. I remember being in the back seat. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would have been. Not, yeah, I probably would have yeah, been. I think 19. you might have been. Ni- well, Maybe we were. Just 19, then. You might have just turned 19 because yeah. you were two. I think, you're, yeah, you're two years older than us, I think. And we were 17, turning 18 at the time. So, yeah, you did. I, you, I you, think you I remember that. I do think I remember. I think that. Todd was. That there. was like his house got wrecked that night, right? <laughs> those guys, <laughs> those guys came over. I, I remember, left before that, though. Oh, dude, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I remember that was such a crazy night. Some girl just, I was just on the stairs, drunk as shit. I don't even remember what was going on. Some girl just runs up to me. And she's like, "You gotta save me," and I was like, "What?" And then all these fucking guys just come in the house and kick all the doors in and shit. And I was like, whoa, oh, what is going on? I'm going to save you. I'm out of here. Yeah, Fuck that that. would have been useful to have Ryan there, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could have, yeah, but. Uh, no, it, it took a while, though, to, to get serious <laughs> with it. Yeah. I'll tell you what happened. Um, so, yeah, Brad Ross was my head coach. And, like, I was I was doing all right in boxing. But, like I said, not not the best in the country. And the, and the best in the country, like, every time I'd fight, like, one of the top amateurs, even top ten in the country. They just like cla- outclassed me, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I was just really like swinging bombs. I feel like you're tough. Like, I was you're, tough. You're very, you can yeah. get hit, and you're willing to get hit and keep pushing forward. Yeah, but they, these these guys, a- amateur fights only three rounds, mm-hmm. right? And there's headgear, and the gloves got lots of padding on them, so it's more of like lots of room to be messy. Yeah, and who's more technical? That's mm-hmm. who wins. Right, so yeah. the, the guy with the big, you, you know, the big padded gloves take takes away from your power. The headgear takes away from your power. So like. The guys would just hit, 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 and move. Is that hit, mandatory hit, for amateur boxing? Everyone has to wear that padding on their. Uh yeah, well yeah. the gloves they just this just the way they're made. They got yeah. more padding to protect fighters. That, you, right. have, you have to wear the headgear too, right? Yeah, but see, I I when I started, they took the headgear away. Oh. They they changed the rule, and then when I turned professional, they put the headgear back on them. It so I had like, like they did it specifically for you to like prepare <laughs> yourself to go. Pro. I don't know. It was weird. <laughs> it was, uh, so there wouldn't be any di- any kind of difference when you went pro. That's why. no. There's a big yeah. big difference well, with the, course, the yeah, gloves, gloves, right? Yeah. The gloves, yeah. It's but, crazy how much like like two ounces of padding could like change fucking. Oh, crazy! So like, it's, well, that's the way they're designed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They're designed to like just take the impact off, take the concussion away a little bit. But so, no. But what I was saying was um. Yeah, so I didn't take it seriously. Like I said, I was fighting, street fighting and boxing all the time. You were doing then, them at the same time. Like, you would still go to Riverview and, oh, and get yeah, fights. Oh, like yeah, I was an asshole straight up. Like, I mm-hmm. was using my, my boxing ability in the streets. Right. Like, would you pick fights with people to kind no, of just, like, you wouldn't do it? Never picked a fight, If someone said anything man. that would kind of remotely end up in you maybe fighting that I person, already you would, yeah, you, are, I already you were swung. all there for it. If, if they even, if, if I knew there was even, like, sense of something starting, there's already people sleeping. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't, I didn't, uh... You didn't waste time. I didn't start <laughs> them, but, like, if somebody even... No, you wouldn't be an asshole coming up to somebody that thinks they're... You no. would think that they thought they're tough and be like, hey, yeah. let's well, fight. It's, it's the way I even... But it's also the sport that you're in love with right now. So, in a sense, yeah. it was kind of like... Well, and, that, and that's kind of like you, the you blur must... line a bit, because it's like, you were professionally a boxer right now, which is fighting, mm-hmm. and then it just, you know... That's like if you were fucking playing basketball professionally but like you still want to you know uh go play, play people on the court yeah, play play 21 21. yeah exactly well, what, what you just said about like you know you know well it's kind of the reverse of what you just said you you know asked if you ever started with anybody because you thought that they were tough i imagine that must have actually hap- happened had to have happened to you a lot well we were just talking about that well, like, before like, you got here oh like, that, like, like where people are just like oh you're the you're the guy that fights like fuck you oh then, man like, that you was know. the word that got around in different places that yeah. he would fight them because of that yeah like it's, that's even uh, still 
Well, and yeah. Then, but then, but then you, you you beat the shit out of a ton of people, and you're gonna end up with like a, a bad reputation because you beat the shit out of a ton of people. But it's like they, it's because they started with you because that's who you are. Well, that's what happened. And then during high school, like, there were, like I wanted to hang out with people and stuff. Like you know, when you're in high school, you want to go to par- house parties yeah, yeah, and go to people's houses. Like people's parents were they were social. like, no, Ryan can't come over. Oh, right. Like I was getting this reputation of like you're just a fucking bomb. Yeah, like a, like a ticking <laughs> time bomb, right? Which I was. So I'm not. I don't even deny it. Like I, I'm honest about it. Like I was. Yeah. Like I said, I wasn't looking for it, but I put myself in positions knowing it was going to happen because I wanted fighting. I just mm-hmm. I wanted to fight. I just didn't want to like be the guy to start it. Mm-hmm. I guess that you wanted sense? there to be a, a reason for it. You know what I mean? And and, and I don't think that probably yeah. at that time you realized that oh, yeah. you were taking that professionally and that that's you know that creates the reason for it. Yeah. There's other guys that are there to do that with you. Well, I, w- I wasn't a professional back then. No, in, but like, I mean, inside or outside the ring. Mm-hmm. But yeah. But you know, I mean, obviously things have changed. Obviously, things have changed. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, what I was gonna say, so like when you were first doing your an- like when you were first involving in these amateur fights and everything, how long did it take before you? Because your record is obviously was is much different when mm-hmm. you were an amateur to when you went pro. How many fights were you in before you won? Like was I? I, I lost my first amateur fight yeah. and then I won my second one and then I went on like a, I think a six fight knockout streak. And then I lost. I got I got stopped in the first round mm-hmm. in a fight. It was the first time I ever went to nationals. So was, I was oh, they threw me in with up, the yeah. senior with the seniors as a super heavyweight. Big guy was against a big guy, right? Is that the the fight you showed me where you're literally like me standing next to you, like looking up? Oh yeah. But you were like fighting this guy that was just it made you look like a, a baby. Oh yeah. To him. What was his name? Uh, um, Stan Surmax, this guy. Big, big. He was the first guy to stop me. He's I fought him twice in a row, and he stopped me two times in a row. Uh, Both. The first, the first one was like he caught me with a right hook. I remember, and like, boom, and like, my legs didn't go or nothing. Like I was standing there. You'd never know that I was hurt. The referee must have saw my eyes and like jumped in. Was like, stop the fight, cause they stopped them quick in the amateurs. Right. I mean, who knows if that was a pro fight, I might have knocked him out in the next ten seconds. But in amateurs, it's about safety. So when a guy gets hit real hard. They'll usually just be like, yeah, you know, stop the throw fight, the towel. throw the towel and whatever. Yeah. But well, I, I find now um, more than ever you see. Well, I don't know about in boxing, but I know in the UFC you see a lot of early stoppages now because they're trying mm-hmm. to stop people from getting, you know, serious brain damage. Because yeah, you know, when you, I mean, in boxing it's different. You drop somebody, there's no going down on them, and and you know, getting a couple extra shots in. But like, no, there's there's definitely a a, a, a want to stop the damage early. That's the difference, man. You you don't see MMA fighters. I haven't personally met any M- MMA fighters who have like symptoms of um, brain damage. I've never met one. Mm-hmm. But boxers, oh buddy, like well, there's so many different ways to damage a person. Like you can lose a fight without getting hit in the face. That's it. You and know what and I mean? like you said earlier, they 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 don't. Um, let it go too long. So a guy gets dropped in but MMA. Sometimes it's really bad. Sometimes you see a guy sometimes get knocked out and they'll get like happens. nine just hammer fists. But but in even the them, the, the brain is already off, so the brain is just chilling, getting hit. It's mm-hmm. not that it always sounds brutal, looks brutal, but what's more, what's brutal Dang about boxing that. is like, okay, let's say me and you are in a boxing match right now, right? We're in a twelve round fight. So that's like forty some minutes of fighting. Well, you're, you're conscious and you're taking those. Yeah, boom, I could boom, I could boom. crack you. Let's say mm-hmm. I crack you and I knock you out and you hit the floor. Somehow you wake back up in eight seconds, get up before ten, and we keep fighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just got knocked out, and now we're gonna keep fighting. And now you're gonna. <laughs> fight. And you can go boom, another boom, twelve boom, rounds yeah. taking uh. taking shot after shot. And yeah. if you look at the copy box numbers or or whatever after the fights, guys are landing like a thousand power punches. To another guy's head. Imagine me hitting you t- a thousand times in the head. You, I think you hit me eight times through like <laughs> yeah. eight inches of padding. But like one that, time. That's that why enough. you see a lot of boxers like they'll start slurring and they'll start stumbling yeah. around. Right. Like, it's, it's dangerous. Like you it, mean like after the fight and like just when they're having like a. Uh, no, like, I mean like, like during like, the. Oh like right, yeah. Them like that. I think he's been like. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, as a person like. Muhammad no, I do Lee. mean long term. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's what I'm saying. And and he's just one case. You know what I mean? You see a lot of that. Like just people. uh degrading over time very quickly is that oh, something yeah. you ever worry about oh all the time yeah all the time but like Must be I a little, sh- little I less scary when you got hands like yours <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what i was gonna say too i mean you don't really put yourself in a position yet to be worried about that but no but i do i do get hit like you definitely got i, it, I get hit you yeah. get and i feel like you fight your best when you get hit well, that's you the said worst something thing. That's because the worst I, thing. I, I had interviewed you <laughs> yeah. uh before working uh, when i was working in advertising and and uh you had said that to me like you know yeah. when somebody can actually hurt you 
it's like it flicks a switch on. Oh, it does. You know it's like I mean? an adrenaline because, rush. Too, like, right? I, like, yeah, yeah. A few fights back, I remember your opponent got replaced. He ended up fighting this guy that really uh, is from Mexico, I believe. It shouldn't have been in there with you. Was that at Center 200? I think it was I think here. It was yeah, that, that I almost didn't fight. I yeah, said yeah. No. I because, right? Like it, it, you know, but you got to do what you got to do. Why? What was the reason for that? Just didn't feel. I didn't feel it was, it was needed. It wasn't. Match. It was honestly like yeah, if I put I like know. 20, 30 pounds on and then fought him right now, it'd be it's fucking pretty bad. insane. It was a bad one. Yeah. But I mean, he actually, you know what I mean? For what it was, he he stood his ground for oh, a minute. Yeah. But, but I, I let mean, him. Yeah. I let him. Vote. Oh, no, well, I mean, I mean <laughs> what are you going to do? It's like, it's crazy. <laughs> well, that uh, must have been the different like mindset you have for you going into that because do you think that like majority of your fights so far you would have considered a challenge? And, like, yeah. you seem like you went into that one that he's mentioned in knowing that it would probably oh, no, be especially pretty lately, easy. like the, the oh, man, that, been, after yeah, after that, fight. I don't think there was any, and even the guy that you were supposed to fight, like, would have been decent. Yeah, yeah it would have yeah. been it would have been a whole different story. It was just like, and that that seems to happen to you kind of frequently too, where where somebody will back out, like, gets real man. The closer <laughs> it gets, like, see, guys will like they'll sign the contract because like it's they it's, want money and it's well, their, that's their life. Right? My opponents are expensive right now because when you you got to think when you're like looking at it from a business side. Um, if you're if you're going if you're man say you're a manager of Mitchell mm-hmm. and like he's fighting a guy 13 and 0 13 knockouts you're you're the manager where's the money he's going he, my exactly, guy's yeah. my guy's risking his life against this guy even yeah. if Mitchell's 15 and 0 with 10 knockouts and his dignity he's, too yeah his but, reputation. yeah well, but, he, but he's fighting a guy who has a who's got murderous power right so where's the money cuz this is a, this is a so very you're danger. with um the company's Three Lions Promotions. Yeah, three Lions. You've been with them since 2018. Yeah, I think so. 2018. Yeah. yeah. So, how many fights were you, like? How many fights did you fight before you got signed with them? Seven pro fights. Okay. So when you in that process, how did that work? Like on the business aspect, like because I'm assuming they are the ones that set up your fights currently, right? Like currently, they find yeah. your opponent and they negotiate with their people and mm-hmm. they set everything up, find the venue. Um, so before that, like, how was what was the process of you having these professional fights? Like, how did well, that get set up? Well, like, remember I said earlier, like my amateur record. So, when you turn professional, like, usually it's the Olympians. They get the they've gone to the Olympics and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like the amateur standouts in the world, those guys turn pro. They got promoters like chomping at the bit to sign them mm-hmm. because they know they're talented. They know they're gonna make great pros. But guys who are amateurs with like like records like I had without any experience outside the country promoters want nothing to do with them because those guys are just going to be the guys who end up being opponents for the olympians for the, look better. Who, the, for, the for the amateur standouts right yeah. so like you take a guy with an amateur record of 10 and 11 which was your which was mine yeah. right against the guy with an amateur record of 320 and fought all over the world you know what i mean mm-hmm. some russian guy right like he's gonna have the successful pro career i'm gonna have the, the pro career of like well, 10 gonna, wins and 10 losses. So the, the, the but there, but right. here's what happened. When I turned pro, like, I just tr- I just started training like a madman. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean a madman. Like, and do you think that that was the, <laughs> the, the turning point that made yeah, you take it and, a little more seriously? And I took my pro debut as an opponent for a heavyweight, and I knocked him out. Oh. I shouldn't have knocked him out. Yeah. Then I fought uh, not a great fighter. Like, he was kind of over the hill. But anyways, I knocked him out anyway. He was an experienced fighter. Well, at the end of the day, it's just out. improving your record. Then my third pro fight, I went in as an opponent again. I was 2-0. and So when went. you say as an opponent. Like, I was supposed to lose. Like, right. I'm yeah, going you're, against you're, the better you're, fighter. Yeah. yeah. But I kept knocking people out. And then mm-hmm. I got, I, somehow I got to 7-0. and all, And I, um. I think by the time you were 7-0, and all, like, the buzz here was the significantly buzz started, high. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, like I, I remember going to a fight. I don't remember. It was at Senate 200 as well. I think it was in... I think it was in like spring of 2018. I don't know. You were still working with Nana too, but I don't know if it was the one that you're talking about. But I remember like the fucking, like there was a lot of people there. Yeah. And they were very enthusiastic oh, dude, about watching like, you fight. Like yeah. it was it, like because I don't think that Cape Breton has seen something like this. I don't know necessarily what the, the boxing history is like here, but there's something about combat sports and boxing. I think that like it's just very easy for any average person to understand. How it works? Yeah, it's a fight. It's not, it's not a lot very of simple. There's, there's yeah, a lot it's, of like, rules, but it's like, like this guy's hitting this guy, and yeah. it's win. like, but you can see <laughs> something very similar to this if you go in a fucking sketchy, on a sketchy street somewhere. Yeah, the Capri. Yeah, you go outside oh, the yes. Capri. I mean, 
you know. But uh, had a couple main stairs. events there. <laughs> 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 yeah. those I wish I was stairs. there for those ones. <laughs> those, those stairs, those stairs are nuts, dude. Them. They're so funny. People just knock themselves out on those. Oh yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I remember the just the, the the enthusiasm and the excitement from the crowd was was something else. It was it was really special to watch, man. But uh, yeah, and I think that was probably within because I was looking at your record before and I was trying to like pair the dates up with the fight that I went to, and uh, I think it was probably still within your first. Was was that was like, my first round knockout? Probably body shot. The guy that was broke he, his I, spleen or something. Where the where are most of the people that you fight? Because I feel like the first fights that you had were they're professional fights, but they're they're Canadian, right? The first yeah, the first three were Canadians. The fourth, I fought the number one guy from uh, there Czechoslovakia. Was, yeah, there was one flag, and I was like, I don't know yeah. what that flag is. He was like the number one cruise rate in like Czechoslovakia. Or I don't even know if I'm saying it right, whatever. And then <laughs> uh, then they started then they started bringing in guys from I fought Czech Republic, Russia. Uh, you gotta fight Putin. Who's what's that? <laughs> President of Russia. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, up on the horse. This guy's all yeah. over the world now at this point. Yeah, that's crazy, man. But uh, so anyway, so after the after so the the first so you kind of like were you when you were going into the first professional fight? What was your because you're basing your pre, you're basing off your previous fights most likely like your expectations of how it could go. Like I'm sure you were not expecting. I mean, you're obviously training to knock him out, mm -hmm. but like. You wouldn't be surprised if it went otherwise because your amateur no. record is very different than your. No. your I, and, I, and, I, and at that time, to be honest with you, I really didn't care. Right. To be honest with you, still, mm -hmm. I see when I look at my record, I'm like, you know what? Like, I couldn't care less if there was a couple L's on there. Right. Even if I lost my next five, I'd be like, oh well, better win my next well, depends five. Depends on what you prove, right? Like, you if know? somebody can <laughs> go back and you got like two losses or whatever, however, however many losses, but you're a yeah. fucking warrior, it's. You, you can see it. It's right there for as, you to see, right? As so. long as the the fights are like wicked fights, I don't care. Win or lose. When you say well, wicked, fights are awesome. When you say wicked fights, you mean as far as like entertaining the people watching? Yeah, or like a slug. I like, challenge you, like both. Like just, a real fight, like like know? it has to be a balance of like technicality and excitement. You know what I mean? Like there has to be those mm -hmm. just power shots, the just winging it and fucking throwing some crazy shit. But you also have to be technical. But it's not that like. You don't want to go see somebody just kind of go and win by points, you know? What no. I mean, I mean no. when, when it gets to really high level technical boxing, you got two guys like that against each other. You're gonna expect that, but mm -hmm. like you're a guy that just goes in there. And and this, I don't know if I we were talking about this on camera or if this was before we started shooting, but like you are a guy that's known. I mean, how many knockouts do you have? How many knockouts? Thirteen out of thirteen. It's all yeah. I was gonna say it's all your fights, right? Yeah, yeah. all my fights. Um. That's insane. So you're known for that. You're like the knockout guy. But the mm -hmm. thing is that people, I don't think, not, you know, people that are real, real fans of boxing will recognize, but you pick people apart. Like we were talking, you, you brought it up before, but I remember watching you beat mm -hmm. a guy's arm to shit, man, like to a pulp. Oh, yeah. So it just opened a window for you to hit, land the knockout. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's not, you're not just fucking bum, 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 and you land with that, that, that one sweet punch. It's like, it's technical. And then you want to set up the fucking show. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not just like, cra It's not uh, disorganized. No, it's very, bombs. very you, calculated. You, you know what you're doing. Yeah. But it's like you'll set it up, and then as soon as that weak point's open, you just, bah. Oh yeah, it's, it's all crazy. like boxing is all. It's all like distractions and stuff. Like if if me and you were like chatting here, and I went like this. Like I'm, I'm like, see my finger yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Like I I'm get, trying not I to look at it because I knew you're trying to. Yeah. Because it's like I'm taking your attention off right. of what I really want to do. Boxing's mm. all about like, just, just setting Honestly, it sounds up. a lot more mental. It's all mental. You're playing games. All because, mental. Like, you know, if you if you keep Wait, trying the fight, to, the fight's all mental. Like if you're going right. to somebody's body, you know, right side of their body, like seven times in a row, they're gonna start thinking, oh, he wants to hit me here, good. They're yeah. gonna protect that, but that's gonna br bring their arm down, and now you have the window up top. You know what I mean? Like that's. Mm -hmm. That that's kind of what it's about is, is is creating a situation where you open a window and then you take advantage. Yeah. And that's something I th I feel like you're really good at. And you, you're so young that like you have so much time to develop that even crazy. Like yeah, I feel like you have a style. you have a, a serious path in front of you. A boxing you know career I mean? with longevity. What age does that usually get to? Like Floyd Mayweather right now is what 44, but 44. he technically but, retired when in like 2015. But he's he? one so. of those fighters too that I was just talking about where like. 
he's going to win by points. He's not going to – I mean, like, yeah, right. I think he's had a couple moments where he's, you know, done some fun stuff. Mm -hmm. But he's not going to win by just knocking you on your ass. He's going to – Make you lose. If you want to play you know it I mean? safe, he's not, he's not going to win. He's going to make you lose. It's That's not. It see, is. it's not easy to do what Floyd does. Like, no, no, no. The way, it's the not. way he fights. So it's like, Very it takes precise. a lot of work in the gym to be able to be such a skilled fighter to be you, safe. You don't get hit. Yeah. To not just, take punishment. And look at his right? record. And, I mean. and that's the thing. Like, yeah, it's so fucking, somebody hits you, it just turns the on switch on, and you just destroy their fucking. I, I have. There's something that's <laughs> in my wiring in my brain that I could never be a longevity fighter. Like Floyd Mayweather, another one's Bernard Hopkins. Want to go way back in time. Archie Moore. These guys fought till they were like 50. Right. Bernard retired You don't say that for yourself? No, but I'll be, I'll be lucky to fight, fight till so. I'm 30. Okay. Because like the way I fight, like if you, like I've had so many tough fights, man. I've had so many gym wars. So many, literally thousands. Mm -hmm. I've been in thousands of gym wars. Like that's, it's crazy to think. But like, and every time I'm in a gym war, I take more punishment than I took in any of my fights. When you say gym war, do you mean like sparring? Yeah. Sparring in yeah. a fight yeah, against another hard. professional, and his coach is there, and my coach is there, and there's people watching, and yeah. it's a fight. And people get slept, people get knocked out, people get careers ended Dude, in the you, gyms. You, you've looked like somebody fucking took a bat upside your head like two weeks before fights. You know what I mean? Always, man. I went into my last fight with a dislocated jaw. What? What do you think about, um, I've, I've heard uh, Joe Rogan talk about this a lot lately, and again, this is MMA, not boxing, but I'm sure it kind of goes both ways mm -hmm. that a lot of people are not are trying not to sp really not necessarily spar but even if they're sparring it'll be like touch you know yeah. what I mean like working on the technique rather than because like you said there's a life expectancy on getting punched in the head there's you got to you, you got to choose your punches turning, right? right like and that you got to choose your fights mm -hmm. so if you're going to if you're going to fight somebody like yourself that's going to come and take your head off yeah. you know what I mean like you you don't want to do that every time you fight you might want to take the technical guy so you can spare yourself that fucking damage. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It, like you get, you got to really pick and choose. But also, I don't think people really take into account the damage that they're. You know, you might spar sixty times before you you have that one fight. You know Man, what I mean? I'm telling you, and, right and, now, and most of that damage is going to come through that sparring. And and you know what? It could be the punch in the actual fight that that really solidifies the damage. But like, there, you got to pick and choose too when you're sparring. But like, what do you think about that? You gotta you gotta spar hard. You gotta really like swing at even you know even while you're training do you really well, gotta hit somebody or that's a good question man because it varies it depends on the fighter well a and guy like you you need to hit her. a guy like that's me, what you do i have to that's what you like, like the way i fight in my style of fighting in the condition i need to be in to fight like i fight i have to spare running like it gets you in like my running will get me in great shape running mountains hitting the bag <laughs> like i can get in great shape but how do you get better at racing a race car you race, race fucking race, race car. car. You have yeah. to be. You have to have somebody in front of you with the grappling, the wrestling, the the short punches inside, like all that stuff. It takes a different type of conditioning. Mm -hmm. You can't just run and then get into a, a fight and do twelve rounds. Mm -hmm. You have to be accustomed to doing twelve rounds. Well, and and also you won't be used to getting clocked. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, but like, like if you if you have to recover in a spar in a sparring uh, situation from just getting smoked. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like. That's yeah. that's that comes in handy when you get smoked in an actual fight. If you haven't been really hit in like a year and a half, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden somebody just knocks you, you know what I mean? Blindsides you'll panic. you. Well, yeah, you'll you're, panic, you're not right? going to be used to it. So there's got to be like a middle ground where, mm -hmm. you know, you're not trying to get the shit beat out of yourself and beat the shit out of your partner, but also be ready for that. Yeah, like I said, it's there's certain like a guy like we all. I'm just using the name because everybody knows it. Floyd Mayweather. He don't got a spur. Because he's been boxing so long and he's so good at his style of he like you say he's a points he's a defensive points fighter right mm -hmm. he doesn't need to be in the in wars in the gym there's right. no reason to do that right because he doesn't oh, he's take been, shots he's anyway so well, experienced he's he, been I, through that I could right I could imagine him before that just dancing around punches yeah you know, and having somebody chase him and just yeah. being like nope 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 but okay. see my <laughs> my style like like this little square pad here if this was my ring like. I want that guy on the ropes the whole fight because that's where I do my damn. That's where I do my work. I get guys in the ropes and I just blast them away. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I do, right? So like, I need to just keep keep doing that and working on that and sparring and be in condition to do that. So I need tough sparring. I it mm -hmm. sucks because like, I wish I could be a Floyd Mayweather and I wish I could right. box but and not take punishment. I, but I, I can't. think you're more <laughs> technical than people give you credit for. Oh yeah, because like, you're looked at as like a knockout guy. But like I was yeah. saying, like you, it's more meticulous like you're picking apart certain aspects of their game like you you oh, can yeah. recognize in your head like what is this guy's uh what's this guy's tendencies 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Is he going to try and hit me with this? Okay, let me damage that arm. Now we can't do that anymore. I see and little you know things, what I mean? right? Like, you, you, that's what I'm saying. You were just saying before, you know, you put your finger over here, you're, these yeah. little distractions. <laughs> like, you, you know you know what to expect from the opponent so well. Oh, yeah. That I feel like with the power that you have, if you really, like, well, I mean, like I said, you're already good at it. But, like, if, if you honed in on that, like the point style, the, the real defensive – but then you had just have that hidden bomb. You do have strength, like no nobody have ever fucking no. seen him. I mean, I haven't gotten hit that many times, but it, <laughs> dude, it's like I was saying it's earlier crazy. that the pa- pow- punching power is like a gift. It's something you yeah. cannot like. I could teach you guys how to throw a proper punch. It's gonna like you're gonna increase the weight behind it a little bit because you learn how to turn your learn, hips yeah, into the mechanics. A, the mechanics of yes. the punch. Yeah. But like to have the ability to hit somebody one time and their lights just go out. That's like something that it's just like some people can run fast. Some people are right. good swimmers, you know. You can fucking run fast. I can run fast. <laughs> yeah. But well, I can punch harder. Running the mountains and shit. <laughs> <laughs> running the mountains yeah. Um, what I was going to ask too is like what point does it t- like when does it get to a point where and I mean obviously you you've gained a lot of notoriety throughout your career so far but like what level like who do you need to fight to like get like on a more international level? Jake Paul is that is that really what it takes right now? Like, what, do you, what, yeah. what do you think about that? Like, because you have, and, 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 and honestly, <laughs> yeah, what? no doubt. I try not to. <laughs> uh, well, I know, but like, no, it's, you you've worked really hard. But then, like, think about the people that you were talking about before that have like, you know, three hundred and twenty amateur records, and then they go pro, and then they fight their way up the ladder. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, there's get all this time down the ladder, fight back up, get knocked down again, yeah. go bankrupt and then, and then, three times. And then this guy can well, come out well, and <laughs> apparently have a pro record. Yeah. Because he fights well, fucking what, Ben Askren. Well, in the bag what, of milk. what what necessarily defines that as a pro record? Is it literally? Is it because they fought another professional fighter technically? Yeah, like, yeah. Or like san- it, sanctioned or whatever is like a professional mm-hmm. fighter. So they are it. technically sanctioned as a professional, like him and Logan Paul. Or, I yeah, mean, yeah. Okay. But I mean, also, not like the, not the Mayweather one. That was an exhibition. Yes, right. that was an that exhibition. Wasn't but like, well, it at, doesn't at, affect anyone's At the same time, record, at one right. of your fights, actually, I fucking saw a uh, some guy's uh, pro debut. Mm-hmm. And he looked like he should have never belonged in the boxing ring. No, like you guys could turn out. pro. Yeah. yeah. You guys could turn pro. You just got to do the fucking paperwork well, okay, and have so some ha- fights. That, <laughs> and that was what I was going to ask because we were talking about, like, we, we were kind of doing the whole timeline here at the end of your amateur career. Mm-hmm. What was that, like, what was that process of turning pro? Like, is it just basically like a decision that's just like, I'm going to go yeah, professional man, that you had to make yourself? So you definitely were at a point of, like, I'm going to take this seriously enough now to co- to consider going professional. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, I was... Um, what was that? I can't remember. Okay, so I was going to trying to make it to the Olympics because they don't allow professionals into the Olympics. Okay. Only amateurs are allowed in the Olympics, right? Yeah. So like, I was trying to get to the Olympics. That was my goal. And what and year is this? This was 2016, I think. Oh wow! Okay, so, so Rio. I, I was trying to get to the Rio Olympics, so I made it to the qualifiers. So you didn't start professionally fighting until 2016? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so I was trying to get to Rio, and. I ended up making it to Montreal to the Olympic qualifiers, and I fought in the qualifiers. And I fought, who did I fight? I fought but this at, didn't count as towards any record, though, right? Yeah, it was my amateur amateur record. Record. amateur. Okay. So, um, I fought the Canadian amateur champion, and the winner would have gone on to Rio. And I, I think I had this fight. This was one fight, and the amateurs were like, if I lost the fight, I'd be like, good job, buddy. Like you beat yeah. the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But this one, I was like, I got it. Like, I fucking won that fight. You're a little aggravated with the I remember the first result. round, I won it big. Second round, I was like, I lost that round. Third round, like, I was like, I think I won this fight. And at the end of the round, I got cut from here to here. Uh, I had to get 34 stitches from the inside out. I even had to get a little bit of surgery. that had to take some, like, flesh off my eye. I mean, it was hanging off, right? This was, was that lo- the scar that goes right there through your eyebrow? One of them. <laughs> There's a few <laughs> of them. But, like, it was a bad cut. But I fought through the cut and, like... I remember at the end of the fight, like, I was, they were getting ready to announce the winner, and I was like, yes. You like, were confident that you won. I was like, I think I'm going to go to the Olympics. And you're going to go to the Olympics. To the Olympics. Fucking, picture that news story. Uh, I was just partying yeah. over at Todd's house. Like, I was like, I'm going to go to the Olympics. We were probably there, bro. <laughs> you probably got us some fucking beer, or, like, but, someone kicked the windows through. But they announced the other guy's name, and I was thinking, like, fuck, like if I had one more round, I would have knocked him out. And the amateur fights are only three rounds. And yeah. I left the ring, and, like, 
my coaches were there and like they were like, yeah, Ryan, like there's you got four more years to the next Olympics, like we'll we'll keep working no. on it. And and I'm like, you're like fuck that, I'm I going think, pro. I think I'm gonna turn pro. And everyone's yeah. like, no, no, buddy, it's too soon to turn pro. You only got 21 fights. Like you didn't, you haven't even fought outside of Canada. But that was that. That must have been you... an intense moment, that actually. Yeah, like people. Yeah. Th- but then there was this one guy, and he was like, no, no, you know what? I think he should because his power, just his power alone, will take him to the top. That's mm-hmm. what this is. What a guy said, like one of the the coaches that were there. This was in Montreal. And I'm like, yeah, I feel like at the time too, nobody knew about the chin. Like I had, a, everyone knew I could take a good shot, but not not quite to the extent like taking pro gloves mm-hmm. to the chin like I do now. But like, I felt like my style, I could have done better in the pro. Did I think I was going to be undefeated and become Canadian champion? No, definitely not in the beginning. I was like, right. I was just like, I want to make a few bucks, like 800 bucks a fight or something to get yeah, paid yeah, to turn yeah, pro. Yeah. Like fucking right. Is that what the payday was like? The first fight? Yeah, I got paid 800 bucks my first fight. That's fucking. My ballin', first four bro. fights. I got 800 paid 800 bucks. So when you were when you were going on to your fifth fight, do you remember what fight it was when you when you first fought in front of the hometown crowd at Center 200? Fourth fight. So that fight, when people like the, how many people would you say would have been at that fight? I think that one there was around. And were you the main draw for that fight? Yeah, I was, I was always the main event. And you Sydney. were paid eight hundred bucks for that fight? No, not that fight. Okay. My first fight in Sydney, I think I got paid like five G's. Went, okay. went and bought a truck for hunting season. There you go. I was pumped. Yeah. Big, I never seen five grand before at that time. Yeah, like, I was like, <laughs> Whoa. Just, just fucking knock somebody out for, for was, something was that you that were after getting. I was I, I did work with you was before that before okay. or no it might have been the first. I, one. I remember you buying a truck like after I first not the first met you because the first time I met you was at Todd's. Yeah. But then I never met you again until I started doing some work with you. You yeah. know what's but crazy? But I remember you buying a truck. That's Actually, all. that was probably. Did you used to do security too, didn't you? Oh yeah. Or, like you were yeah. like yeah. I was a bouncer security. Because I remember. That's, that's scary. Actually, I'm just trying to. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, yeah. You better not act up. That's a good move by who anyone for anyone that hired you. But oh, okay. I remember doing a I don't forget what show it was, but it was that Center 200. I was opening up for somebody, and I think you were security that night. I probably I was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember seeing you. I was like, oh man, thanks for <laughs> buying me uh, that beer that time. Oh yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. So so okay. So when there was starting to get so basically like the, like and I and I don't want to get in any specifics or anything, but like the the payday that you receive is kind of based off of the hype that's. You know, it's how, many tickets can yeah. you sell? how many tickets can you sell? It's like anything. You're going to get it. paid. It's like if you're an artist, you get booked to do a show by a promoter. They're going to pay you to hopefully be able to sell enough tickets for them to profit off of what they already paid you. So you need to be happy with that. You bring out the people and whatever. Um, so that must be obviously why it's always more preferred for you to, you know, fight at home in comparison to being elsewhere. That's it. The only, yeah. the only, the only way I'm going to fight outside of Canada like, I got a good base right now in Hamilton. I got a good fan base there, so I can sell. Well, you fought there a few times, haven't Yeah, you? I got a, like, like, I go to Hamilton, and it's it's not like Cape Breton. Like, I go anywhere in Cape Breton, either somebody's giving me the finger or somebody's waving. Like, a lot of people know in Cape Breton. Right? Yeah. Cape Breton. It's, it's very divided. One of the two. When it comes to hometown Oh, anything, you're definitely yeah. a, home, a hometown fucking hero, for but, sure. But I mean, in, in Hamilton, like, it's getting to the point now. Like, I get recognized there quite yeah. a bit. Oh, yeah. So, like. What do you, you think know? it takes to become somebody that. Any, like, th- that, like, is it just for them to be able to have the opportunity to come out and see you fight and then watch how you fight and you knock somebody out and they're like, I'm a fucking fan of that guy. I'm I don't gonna come know. back well, out next just, time. Well, I mean, it's just crazy when you see somebody fucking destroy somebody on a live stream and then all of a sudden you're running into them in the street and you're like, you're a goddamn <laughs> weapon. Well, I remember, I remember the first time I, f- I worked with you and I had watched, we, I was doing uh, filming some stuff mm-hmm. for you. And so prior to that, and, and I was, you know, I watched MMA, not really a whole lot of boxing. I've seen some boxing, but I was like, all right, I got to watch this, you know, see, investigate what I'm about to do. And I just watched you beat the shit out of some people. And then I had to interview you like a few days later. And I was like, Sitting across the table, I'm like, ah, <laughs> what the fuck? This, this, fight this guy's like, God damn. Well, it was just like. It was almost like looking down like the barrel of a gun that you know it, it probably isn't gonna shoot you, yeah. but it could. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it could. Yeah, it was a hair trigger. You know what I mean? Well, not yeah. not you, but I just mean like it, I was just like, God damn, like this is a a weapon in front of me. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's intense. Have you ever gotten any like recognition from people outside? Like obviously you fought people from different countries and everything like that, but like in your space, I mean, you have you currently hold a very honorable ranking in, in, in Canada and mm-hmm. on the world stage as what well. Was, like, what was, like, the most surprising recognition that yeah. you've ever got? Have you ever had, like, someone reach out and be like, yo, man, I just clicked on the stream and watched you knock this fucking Russian guy out, and now, uh... Do you mean, like, 
people that like, are, I like, just, like a famous person that was like, this oh, guy's yeah. fucking crazy. I did, yeah. yeah. I had quite a few like people message me. You should. I can't wait. Give me yeah. a shout out. Like, yeah. famous people, famous rappers. Like who? Uh, there's just one guy, man, very recently, and I can't remember his name. Because I would imagine like, there's a lot of people that just kind of get down on that like worm, like that rabbit hole. Our wormhole Some or people, whatever on YouTube the and they like, just be clicking on shit. Boxing, oh yeah, man. people love boxing. It's like Drake boxing. with fucking battle rap and shit. Like just random stuff and just people like interested Drake goes in. to like high school basketball games. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. You know exactly. what I mean? See, my promoters are friends with Drake. Yeah, no, I would he imagine. Goes, he because... goes to their parties like and stuff. Yeah, man. I'm not kidding you. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean yeah. well, they're, where they, they're based in Ontario too, yeah. right? So. Yeah, and now uh, well, Toronto. Like, do you know who the rapper was that? What did he did he show you in a story or he just messaged you? He had over a million followers. No, he messaged me, like straight up messaged me. Like, You're a beast, bro. I was like, thanks, and I looked. And and you don't even remember his name. I don't remember his name. Dude, I swear to God. The fuck, bro. That's good. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm like a two. I'm yeah. so off like social tell, media. Tell him to hop on a track. And then there was a YouTuber too, he who has like pictures with like Jake and Logan Paul. He messaged me. Like don't well, think, don't, don't think Jake and Logan don't know who I am. I talked to to Jake's coach. Oh really? BJ Flores, yeah. I talked to him. So like, what did? How, so how did they reckon that? Because I know you made that post after his fight with Ben. He saw it. Jake saw that post. Yeah. I'm not kidding you. Like I talked to his his coach, BJ Flores. You got the receipts? I'll show you. I'm gonna show <laughs> it on the camera. This is this is uh, this, this is exclusive is we... information right here. <laughs> Jake Paul is aware of Ryan Rosicky. Jake uh, because, Paul. So you made the post. You made has the po- a wet vagina. You BJ the- Flores. Yeah, that, yeah. That's Jake's coach. Like. Like oh, him and Jake Paul. Isn't that and his then dad? No. His dad's oh. like super douche. Let's see. This is just, I'm just like showing you how often yeah. oh. this guy. Yeah, no, oh. he, he, he's him 100%. We gotta get some screenshots. We gotta get some screenshots of this. So we'll edit it into post <laughs> and fucking put them on blast. I was telling them about, um, yeah. there's a so, yeah, so it, it seems like it's a conversation where there's mutual respect. And, and oh, yeah. You're, you're professional. You're not, oh, you're like, yeah. that's, that's the difference is like when you make these posts and stuff, I mean, especially in the, in the fighting space, it seems like, you know, it, it's, it's competitive and you call people out. And obviously Jake Paul is a very a lot of ego, popular like name saying. that's associated mm-hmm. with this sport right now because he's bringing people's people that wouldn't watch boxing otherwise to watch it because he's a famous YouTuber. But, okay, so did he reach out to you first or you reached out to his His coach? coach? Yeah. I reached out to him. Because you were like, let's make this happen. I'm a real boxer. Yeah. 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 Which, as you should, you fucking miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So, why not? He was on, like, a live thing on Instagram. I don't even know what you call it. Instagram uh, Live? Instagram Live. And, like, (laughs) he, I don't know, I, I was, I clicked on it and I sent a message in. And I was like, what's up? But you followed him already, I would imagine. Yeah, and yeah. he was like, oh, Riziki. And he said, and he was talking to his buddies. Right. Jake Paul was in the back seat of his car. They were going to a party or something. And like, Oh, and so he, he, he said Riziki when he was in the car with Jake Paul yeah. in the back seat after like, you were like joined I'm saying, like, Don't think Jake don't know who I am. Oh, 100%. Like, you don't think they went to a party afterwards and he was like, oh, that guy. Look at this guy. We got to avoid that fucking yeah, guy. Don't fight ever him. fight well, him. Because <laughs> Jake Paul is not going to fight leave a Leave him in Canada. Well, that's the, well, I was saying that before. That's it. Is that, that fucks up the money. You pick and choose your fights. And yeah. and they're in a, in a position where, like, what would Jake they Paul knew he was going to beat Ben Askren. Of course. Ben Askren's well. like an Olympic wrestler. Dude, Ben Askren who can barely knew Jake throw Paul a punch in his ben professional Askren. career. I could train both you guys in a month to knock out Ben Askren. Like, let's guaranteed. do it. Let's set guaranteed. it up right now, bro. If we can get guaranteed. some publicity from you just talking about uh, Jake Paul being aware of you and everything, talking to his manager, we fight Ben Askren, <laughs> let's get it. Is that what are you going to say, Jake? Same card, you fight Ben Askren. There you go. No, the, the card go. is I fight Ben and then Mitch fights Ben. Dude, when I was <laughs> one of the – wait, 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 wait. Who was? <laughs> <laughs> Who's fighting who? We're both fighting Ben Askren. Bro. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. But yeah, right. if you, I, I look at it from their point of view. It's like, and not just me. There's all kinds of guys in the world in my well, weight class the fights, right? that you don't want to fight. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I'm not the only killer in, in the cruiserweight division because Jake and Logan are both in the cruiserweight division. Yeah, so it, it, it would. Do you would think, think that harms sense. your ascent? You What's you that? Know, do, you, do you find that harms like your your upward trajectory? That you're actually so dangerous that people don't want to fight you? Absolutely. You wouldn't believe, man, the, the amount of guys that my promoters try to get to fight me who were, who literally straight up just say no. I was Top saying that guys earlier, the there's lots of guys that actually sign with you and then they back out. Like I'm, I'm in a position then, right now, It's I'm in the worst position ever because... None of the top, like, I want to fight the top guys in the world. I want to fight top 10 guys and make freaking big money right. and get the hell out of boxing before I have brain damage. That's what yeah. I want to do, right? That's the plan. That's the plan. But, like, right now, the top guys want nothing to do with me because they I'm... They don't want it to ruin their reputation. They don't want to yeah. deal with what they're the gonna lose it. that would be in the first place. So you technically could have the potential 
to be one of the biggest boxers in the world. Yeah. It's just the people that you need to fight to achieve that status won't necessarily take the fight with you because they're scared that nobody wants to get a hit. It's like not a it's fucking it's baseball. It's bat not them. Every time. It's, yeah. their, it's their it's management. their people. Right? Well, they're, they're, they're weighing, they're weighing yeah. risks. Right? Fighters fight. Well, well, if fighters some, fight. If, if somebody else is, has this, has the same record as you. They don't want to tarnish the record, and, and I'm sure that you actually probably don't give a fuck. No, I don't give a because, fuck about because my record. You, you or theirs. You're the type of guy that, that wants to prove something, and if you go to the ring and you prove that you're inferior to the next guy, then that's what it is, right? A lot of these guys have a record that they want to uphold, mm-hmm. like uh, a Boken Bakby or whatever the fuck. Yeah, I got in an argument with him on Facebook. Just trying no, to get yeah, rights no, to a goddamn no picture anyone, just to do a poster for you guys. You know what I mean? And yeah. he had a fucking sick record until you banged him out like yeah. he was the fucking bench. That was the, that was the he was old. Was he, who was the yeah, old? He was undefeated. Until I don't know Ryan how old he was. He was 30s when I yeah. saw him. He, he wasn't yeah, that old. He was in his prime, like undefeated. He, he was probably at the edge of his like. Was that, long, that was like the black dude? Yeah, yeah, six five. That was for the Canadian title. But but he was a seri- he was looked at as a serious boxer. I don't, I don't me, think he'll ever be looked at the same. No, after he, you if did he would have beat me, he would have went on to make some good money and have a good. But, career. But think about the guys you know? that have twice the amount of wins as you, that have never fought anybody like you. There's the you know what I mean. Everybody in my there's weight people division, probably have like three, four times so, the amount of wins as you, yeah. and have never fought anything like you. You know what I mean. Look That's, at my resume for thirteen pro fights. And and no one takes into consideration that I was a nobody in the amateurs. I'm not supposed to be 13 and 0. Well, 100. percent You know so what I mean? Th- I feel like you've had every single odd stacked against you, and you've prevailed beyond those odds. Because it's like when you yeah. look at your record as an amateur, and then you go into pro, and then you knock out the few, first few opponents that you yeah. have, and then it just continues to happen and happen mm-hmm. and happen. It's 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 definitely something that people wouldn't have bet on when you first went professional. And no. what what do you think that there was a switch in the type of response that you would get from the boxing community and the people in Cape Breton after like do you remember what fight it was where people were like really beginning to pay attention? The one we were just talking about. The one at Center Two Hundred. No, Aboken. The one oh, I, went, okay. I went to Hamilton. It was I left Cape Breton. That, no, that was, was that went your first fight, fight outside title. of here. Yeah, and I fought him in his hometown. Like I went to his hometown yeah, and yeah, took yeah. his belt and came back. Oh, that's bad. And yeah, I was so not supposed to. Did, did you drive seven and zero? Did you drive back on the motorcycle? What is no, it? I wasn't. Uh. I didn't drive the bike at the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, that was the fight there. I remember coming back and people started like treat me differently. They were like, because before that it was just like, oh yeah, Ryan's. He's, he's like, doing his little boxing yeah, thing. Yeah, he's doing his little boxing uh, thing. And also, right. I yeah. feel like here, like you, you're like in the. To- can you grab my other one out of the fridge too? Oh, right here. no. Can I okay. Get it? Okay. Perfect. You got it. You're like, you're a fucking dangerous guy. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And not in like a bad way, but it's just like, like yeah. when you were younger, you know. Like I said, like people would probably fuck with you, because they're like, oh, this is the guy that thinks. Like I remember this one time, man. I was in. I got into bodybuilding when I was like 15. Yeah. Right. So I got. I was pretty jacked, and I remember picking up a fucking. I was like, my chair yeah. had gum on it. Oh yeah. And the next chair over didn't. So I fucking, I pick up my chair. I pick up the other chair with one hand, move the other one over. And then one of the, like, the hockey guys in my class is like, oh, Mitch thinks he's fucking big because he can pick up a chair with <laughs> one hand. I'm like, bro, if you can't pick up a chair with one hand, you got a goddamn problem. Yeah. But it's those type of guys, right, that yeah. would fuck with you. Of course. You know what I mean? Be like, oh, you're the big fucking you tough. hockey players? Yeah. Yeah, oh, most dude. of my fights, man. Hockey players. Most of my fights. Ninety percent of my street fights. <laughs> guys, were guys who can dance coach. on skates and, and shoot rubber things. And more than one at a time. <laughs> Always more than one at a yeah. time. They try to get you like five at a time, but just come at me. Like, yeah, like, no, Jesus. no. One on one, they don't want to fuck with you, bro. They, they, start, can do, they can do something very no. specific and not. Start hitting purposeful. me with hockey sticks. I'm like, fuck yeah. off with that shit. Fucking you know <laughs> <laughs> hit me with but that. But no, I feel like that you 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 must have had a ton of that. That oh, I've had a little bit of that, like just when I was. I just didn't. There, there was one. There was one time that uh, I was never a fighter person. But there was one time that I wanted to fight somebody and it wouldn't. It, it, they it wouldn't. Just, I was, well, it was, <laughs> I went from being. This is the thing. When I was like really young, nobody mm-hmm. wanted to fuck with me because I was so small. Because I'm yeah. pretty small now still. I remember like, like so tiny and Mitch had, Mitch had blue hair and he was like three feet with an earring. That's how yeah, I was. So I was like, I was tiny. But so I was like too. tiny, tiny little guy. And then in. in uh, when I, I like so grade seven, I was like eighty five pounds mm-hmm. and like four foot three. Grade nine, I was like not even a foot taller than that, but 
double the weight, <laughs> right? Yeah. And that's when I got into the gym, and then I fucking put on a bunch of size right away. I can't remember. Who did who you want to fight? I can't. I was just trying to remember that. Put I got upset. Blast, with, right I got now, upset bro. with somebody. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it, uh, it was over. Going here. Over yeah. Female. It'll be on the same card as the Ben Askren. Oh, I, I fucking. Anyway, I love fighting. But anyway, it was like, it was like, no, I don't want to do that. It was like, I don't want to do that, and I've never fought anybody in my life. You know what I mean? So I couldn't imagine somebody fucking being stupid enough to come up to you and be like. Oh, you're the, you're the I big, was, you're the big I was tough very guy, aren't skinny, you? man. Like, when I was, like, before 18, I was super skinny. Like, 6'2", right. 135, 140 pounds. Right. Like, I was a beanpole. Yeah. I did not look like someone who would knock you out. I looked like someone who you could, like, hit and they would go down. But I was like... I feel like that's mental, dude. Man. Like, I feel like not totally mental. You have to have that gift of power. But yeah. Like, well, it's the violence behind well, the power. I've, I've related it to this, <laughs> like... I used to do, I used to kind of train sort of like powerlifting style, even though I was more into bodybuilding. Like powerlifting yeah. is like doing a million sets of like insane weights and whatever. Totally but like, not. I got into this place where I wanted to look up at the bar and think that that was going to kill me. Mm -hmm. If I drop this on my neck, I'm going to die. Like for real. And that was fun. Like that was like my edge. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you find this edge where it's like, this is dangerous now. <laughs> you know what I mean, and and, and uh, but you're in that that place where you, uh, I mean, when you were younger, you probably felt that with other people. You wanted to find like the person that was going to put up some sort of. Well, first, give you a reason to fight. Second, give you a real reason to fight. You know what I mean? Give you a reason to actually have to have a fight with them now. And that's why yeah. I, I think you like to you like to get hit before you turn the switch on. You know I don't what know I mean? what I don't know what it is. It, it's like you you need to feel that danger really go all the way. Yeah, you know what I mean, like. I, I can't relate because I've never really fought anybody like that, but it, it, I, I can kind of relate in that way where I remember, like, looking up at, like, you know, 300 pounds and be like, ah, oh, if I drop this on my neck, I'm mm -hmm. toast. <laughs> you know oh, what yeah. I mean? Well, and I like, guess it's just kind of like the feeling of knowing that... It's being at the wall, you have, dude. You, you have, have to... There, you, you have either, no other either, choice. It's either to, that or nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what but I mean? But to, uh, to prevail, but... Um, yeah. Well, something I want to ask you is, like, obviously that what comes with... Um, you know, building a name for yourself in a, in a in a place where the things that you're currently achieving isn't something that people see every day mm -hmm. comes with a lot of backlash. And people are just, they decide to kind of just attempt to try to talk shit and tear somebody down just because, you know, there's a certain mindset. And I think that people don't give people credit, especially around here. So I've experienced this myself for the amount of people that are actually supportive mm -hmm. and the amount of people that genuinely do want to see people make a name for themselves and inevitably also make a name for the place that they're from that are from here that are that are working towards something there's a lot i think there's i honestly truthfully think and i don't know if you would agree with me on this but i think that there's more people that are supportive around here that want to see people succeed you know than people that hate but the people that hate they definitely are vocal and they're, they're the and, they're, and, and, and they're confident mm -hmm. and, and they're the loudest because essentially like you put they're something boring. out on, on social media, you know, you're used to seeing the positive comments, the ones that are negative stick out. Mm -hmm. And that's the and, and it's always happens because those are the ones that get your attention a little bit more. So like, was there a period of time where you started to notice that kind of pop up a little bit more? And like, how did you deal with it? Like, did you have to like. Were you, were you, was there ever a time where you were responding to people at first being like, no, you're wrong, or mm -hmm. blah, 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 or like, that's incorrect, like, why would you say that about me, or whatever, defending yourself, or were you always like, I'm not going to respond, I'm just going to stay focused? You don't seem like no. a very social media yeah. And I was guy. always like that, too, like, with, with, with music and, and, and whatever I did, like, there was always people like who would, like, you know, Mitchell Bailey rap battle <laughs> me or whatever, and I'd yeah. be like, I wouldn't even answer. Well, every because party in high school was like... Do a freestyle, bro. Yeah, do and it's like, that's cool, battle. but it's like, you, it's not like you want to go somewhere and do the thing that you do, like, when you're at home or mm -hmm. what you're working towards. Like, it's not, it's, I don't need to prove this to you guys. So it's like, did you ever have a moment where you were engaging a little bit too much in that, or how did you deal with, with, uh, I did. I, I used to engage quite a bit. Like, when I first started getting a lot of hype and noticing the negative comments and the negative messages and all that stuff, like, I used to take it to freaking heart. Right. I was like, you. He's like, you don't understand man. how hard I'm working. Well, I didn't understand social media right. at first, and I, I didn't. I feel like you're I not that type of guy. I'm kind of no. like that too. It I took was, me a long time to get into it. Like man. I was taking it personally. So when yeah, somebody would yeah. say something to hate, I'm like, you want to fight? Right. <laughs> well, let's go fucking fight. Yeah. What are you doing? Messing and it's, me and on it's this different part? too because everything that you do, <laughs> your, your no. success is kind of based around no, the number one like uh. thing that is involved with people's ego, yeah. egos, especially as a man, like. Guys want to feel like they want to. They want to outfight the next guy. Or they want to be, be stronger and all that mm -hmm. shit. Like, I mean, 
So with you like literally being the embodiment of succeeding in that, that would probably make a lot of guys that are insecure anyway be even more insecure and just talk oh, shit to man. their friends. Oh, my Dude. buddy could take him or whatever. So when you're seeing those <laughs> comments, like was there like what was the time? What when did what was it that made you kind of like mature mentally to be like you know what I'm what I'm trying to work towards is bigger than all this shit and I'm not gonna pay attention to this. I'm just gonna stay on my path and do what like the mission was in the first place and succeed in that once i stopped taking literally life too seriously Mm. that's when everything changed Mm. like that's when things started to change right like it's when did you do that uh, a little about a year and a half ago i i found that i literally what you just said taking life too seriously i found after my first child came that i was like I have so much. I, I have something real to focus on, and and it's probably like that with your career, where you yeah. have something so like that you actually have to focus on. That it's like people want to make all this noise and they want to talk all this mm-hmm. shit. I I literally don't have time for that. I also noticed something too, like when when I'm in public in the real world, right? Like I have not once, in like not one time, have had anybody in Cape Breton say anything to me. Ever not well, no, I, well be, I'm talking since my <laughs> since like I won the Canadian title as a right. pro right, never, not one time, on social media on the other hand like oh, oh I've been going you're through anonymous. messages like <laughs> yeah, 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 holy yeah, yeah. shit well that's what we were talking <laughs> about before we started recording too like even I feel like even myself like very few ever have had interactions with people where they would call you out in person because. People don't necessarily like conflict in the first place, no. especially if there's no, no reason the to start the conflict. That, that it's step a back sense. level where it's like, unless you have to run into that person in I, person. I like to use no um, this is a little theory. I don't know. Maybe someone else already created it, but I already kind of I kind of created it on my own. I'm sure someone else did, but like when you go to the wildlife park, right? And there's like, say there's a, you're walking through with your woman or whatever, and there's a bunch of kids up in the front, and do you come up to the to the the cage with the bear, the cage with the cougar, something that's life-threatening. The cage yeah. with the wolf. You, wanna, you know, yeah. you know that that can kill you. The between there's you and this animal, and then there's the cage. Without that cage, you are not going to approach that animal. You're going to look at it and try to sneak away, get your fucking bear spray out. You're mm-hmm. terrified for your yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's how I felt but if you, I interviewed you, <laughs> if you throw that cage up there, well, let me grab a fucking rock and throw it through a head. Yeah, because you know that you're, you, you, <laughs> you, know, that, you know that you're safe. You know you're safe. <laughs> you know you can communicate with somebody on social media, well, and they'll be able to see it. That's but this. nothing can actually be the. That's a cage. There's no repercussion to it. That's it. 100. percent You know what I mean? So like, yeah. it, it gives these people the, the opportunity to engage with something that they would never engage with or, ne- or never even think mm-hmm. about doing it, it. You know? Do you find that? It's funny. Almost the opposite <laughs> of that has, uh, ha- like, like, have you ever run into somebody and they're almost like, uh, like what I was saying the first time I interviewed you, I like mm-hmm. literally, I was like, this guy is a goddamn weapon. <laughs> like the first, first time I sat down, I was like this, like, oh yeah. No, and I don't mean it in a bad yeah. way, but I was like, yeah. this guy is goddamn scary as fuck. And there's no it. reason why I should be scared right now because I'm just asking questions. But I was like, well, if I ask the, the wrong question, am I going to go through the wall? <laughs> no, <laughs> you no, know no. What I mean? Well, I feel like, has, has that impacted, like, your day-to-day? Like, have you ever run into somebody and they're like, like, do, do you feel like that has changed your kind of personal interactions with people? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I um, mean, obvi- I mean, well, you know what? I, I love, uh, what's the quote? Um, it's about fear and respect. Mm-hmm. And, and, and almost that they're kind of the same thing. I feel like Jay might know this off the back of his fucking mind. No. But anyway, there's a quote about this. That, you know, I, I would rather be feared oh, like, than respected or something like that. Because it's, one it's, one means the other. It's too you know what I mean? like different. If you're, if you're feared, you're respected, in a sense. They link together. They're also different. But you, it's weird. It's yeah. weird. But, like, how do, you, how do you feel that has, like, impacted personal interactions with, like, normal people? Like, say you run up to somebody in the street. You know what I mean? And they're like, "Oh, Ryan!" And you're like, "Oh!" And you know, I, don't what's up? Like, I don't feel like people are scared of you. No, not I don't, scared, not but it's scared. just like it's all like I said before. It's almost like you're this different kind of per- like if somebody just randomly recognized me. Not that mm-hmm. this podcast is you know big or anything, but like somebody's like, "Hey, Mitchell!" It's not like I'm turning around and I'm like mm-hmm. somebody that could destroy their fucking life. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I, know. I, I get I get what you're saying. Like I try to nowadays, like like. We're talking two, I'm sure, I'm 2000, sure most of the time it's, it's pretty pleasant. 2016. Like, Fuck you, Ryan. No, it's, like, it's, I've had my slip-ups. We've all read newspapers, right? Uh, I fucking, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I've been charged 
a few times since since I turned my life around. So like, you don't like, Dude, you, don't I, ju- you don't just straighten up and then mm-hmm. nothing ever happens. There's I, been there's been curveballs, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Now, like things have been going good, and like I quit drinking. That was obviously the number one problem. Yeah, that's but, a big one. But but anyway, like, you know, there's there's been times where people really like. And what did you know? Well, people people also like prey on somebody that they want. To, so a lot of people won't say anything about someone that they're secretly like hoping for them to have a downfall mm-hmm. situation. And then once that they have a reason to justify why they might be like closet hating on them, mm-hmm. they'll come out publicly and they'll feel like it's just free range yeah. to be able to say whatever they want. Yeah. Oh, he was a dick to me in science class in fucking grade <laughs> 10. Like, I swear I saw something and it was like, man, Ron, uh, he said that, like, yeah. this, I, I feel like a lot of people just pull shit out of their asses. And it's like... Some of them I, lie. They just no, straight, straight up, up lie. lie. 100%. Like, and I remember up. seeing that shit about this, this, this <laughs> situation and it's like, I remember that, you know... There was even like clarifications from the direct source that these people who were so confident in their you know speculation about certain things mm-hmm. were wrong, and it, and it was so interesting to see them try to respond when you know actual inf- like real facts were presented to them, mm-hmm. and you know it, it, it's just so interesting because people think that when somebody is a public figure that is paid a, a lot of people are paying attention to and something happens they read an article they read some comments and then they start to develop their own perspective of what is the situation and then they just think you that they confidently know, know they believe it and they believe it they, really they believe make themselves, themselves believe it because oh, yeah. people like to believe <laughs> that's the bored narrative. people that's people th- those people are people that don't have anything they, going they on like to b- but the thing is like people like to believe the narrative that is most fitting for what they want to believe, right? Exactly. Even if it's not necessarily true. Most people true. want to fit in too. That's a big problem yeah. with this shit. Is because like, like, like legit, like you could you could have gone to high school with like a hundred people mm-hmm. that have no real opinion on you, mm-hmm. but some dickhead that they're friends with fucked with you, mm-hmm. and you beat the piss out of them, and now all of a sudden all of this one guy's friends. Oh, like, oh, he's an asshole. Fuck yeah. this guy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Fuck his career. Kind of away for the but, moment, it, but, like, but it's, 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 you know what I mean? It's not real. Like, they're, they're, they're not really assessing who you are as a person. It's, you know, one experience vicariously through this other person. And it's like, I had, uh, this it's, is, it's never real. Like, most of the people that hate on you, it's never a real reason. Funny story for you is, like, I just said, I, like, I stay in trouble and I don't drink. Right. So I'm very, like, hesitant to pull the trigger with, my hands. I would not hit anyone unless I absolutely fucking had defense. to defend yeah. my Your freaking fiance, defend somebody in my family, like gun to my head. Other than that, I got no interest in doing shit in the streets. Like I'm not. If unless there's like a fucking ten thousand dollar check, I'm not fighting you. You know what I mean? Pay yeah. me or not fighting. Well, you get paid too. That's, well, that's Why would you fight someone for Why? free in the fucking street? Yeah, exactly. Break bullshit. my hands and I can't get paid. Right. But yeah. anyway, um, there was a hater, online hater, and the worst part is, is. He he's probably gonna watch this. I don't care. Um, I used to help this tell guy. Tell him the fuck off. Right I used now. to tell him. I used to make. <laughs> this guy was getting into lots of trouble when he was like 15, 16, right? Buddy from the pier, I think. Mm. Anyway, he. Uh, I used to help him train with him and like invited him to come train lots of times. Just like I'll help you out, get you amateur fights. Oh, and I know who stuff, you're talking right? about. Yeah. And anyway, he starts running his mouth big time. Oh. And he and he messaged somebody saying he was gonna knock me out next time he saw me. So I was like, Can I ask you a question? What's that? You had a press conference where this guy did his pro debut, right? No, no, he's not. A, no, this is the guy from the pier who this never guy, fought in his life. Yeah, no, the guy talking shit. It's just a oh, guy. Oh, just oh, a guy. okay, okay. Just no, no, I, I thought you were talking just about the kid, in my opinion, okay. right? Never mind. Sorry. But anyways, I was pumping gas. I was on my my Harley and I was pumping gas uh, at the Irving in Sydney, and he was in at the Irving talking with his buddies. This is like two nights ago, and he looked at me and I looked at him and like I don't know if he knew that I saw. And I, if I read that, I read some stuff sometimes. It's I go crazy on that and people tell me the think worst thing ever. And I dude. looked at him and I was like, it's "Yeah, no, I gotta yeah. say, so I gotta, I gotta approach him because mm-hmm. this uh. is a guy who I actually helped and trained, and then right. he goes and runs his mouth like it's that." Just, right? It's disrespectful it, because it's not like so you I ever can... had to do that, right? And it's like people too, like they'll talk shit about someone online who people are familiar with, even mm-hmm. if it's on Facebook and it's someone that people know around here, mm-hmm. and they, for whatever reason, don't think that that person is going to see it. It's, it's Cape Breton. It's We're so gonna, whack, dude. Like, like just, I remember... Just I rem- clarification, his last name doesn't start with a V, does it? Uh, no. Okay. No, but anyways, I walked up, <laughs> and, I, and I, I took my helmet off, 
Yeah. And instantly, when he realized it was uh, me, like, he, like, I've never seen a body lock up like that, right? right. And, like, his buddies were there, and I looked, and everybody looked the other way, like, oh, we're doing... <laughs> I said, I said, is there something you want to say to me? No, 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 no. So he, he, so, so <laughs> he acted confused, right. right? And I said, no, no, I know, I read it. Like, yeah. I saw the text that you sent this guy. I, I told him the name. I said, you sent that guy the text mm -hmm. saying, that next time you saw me, you were going to crack me in the jaw. I said he said that for I real. said listen I'm not gonna say his name I said make it good I said make it really good and he was like I I he could have hit me I wouldn't even hit him back I'm like, so I would have been like do you feel better now you're right do you feel better now right. like what did that do 100%. But I had no no interest in so did he publicly say something about you yeah like he said that next uh, time he saw you he was gonna crack you in the jaw yeah, yeah on yeah. Facebook no no he sent it to, to somebody a friend and, and I saw it. saw it and I saw it but he also put things on public too but like threatening shit Nah, not threatening, just talking shit, right? right? But this, like I said, this is, I would never have said but anything. But it shows how much you've grown over the years and, and everything. Like, you know, oh, Brian man. at 15 would, would take this. He'd be still laying there. He'd be at the gas station. He'd be still laying there. He'd be at the gas station, underneath the gas station. No. He's pumping up his car, dude. <laughs> Fresh like, concrete uh, right over there. But I just <laughs> wanted to, like, let him know, like, that I saw it. And, like, if you got something to say, say it to me. I, I said, listen, I don't do this cell phone stuff, like. Like work problems out in the real world, right. you know what I mean? And that and that's a th and that's the barrier that people have become so comfortable with is just like to have the phone, anyone can say anything. But really, they don't. Pr I think we're at a point now we're so desensitized that we don't even necessarily consider that there might be real world consequences, consequences to that. Yeah. Yeah, you, like people don't realize you may run into that person that right. you're talking mad shit about. Exactly. You know. That's a crazy. That, that's a crazy thing. Um, there's certain people where it's not really a problem. But I kind of laugh, like I kind of laugh. Like it's when I got back on my like, bike and I'm yeah. going away, I'm like laughing. I'm like, like this is funny. It's stupid shit, bro. <laughs> and it's crazy because you have made such a name for yourself, but you're also still here, so yeah. you can run into those haters sometimes. Oh yeah. Um. So like, at this point too, because you said like, and then what was interesting too, like you, you you said you don't really hope to fight after thirty. Mm -hmm. So it to me it sounds like the next four years of your career are extremely crucial extremely extremely crucial this so is it, you man. need to get the biggest fights you need to have the biggest moments mm -hmm. to be able to kind of like set you up for the rest of your life yeah so what do you think necessarily in your words what do you think needs to happen to be able to like put yourself in position for that i think most of it already happened okay. i think right now it's about like I think, fi like you think, like financially, like as far as like having a huge fight, is that what it is? That what you need? Yeah. Yeah. But like for for that to get that fight, I have to get worldwide recognition. I said right. I said it earlier. Like I'm in a bad um, situation because I'm 13 and 0 with 13 knockouts. But if you look at my record, don't not just the casuals. He's fighting all bums. That's their, uh, but if you actually look, that, that's what a hater would say. The guys that I'm taking out right. are guys that have not been taken out before. You know, guys who have shown super durability against other top guys, but I, but I'm the one taking them out. So like, when a manager looks into that, he's like, "Oh, this is a real dangerous guy. Right. Like, this is actually this is no joke." This is a but third, how would they not is, already know? About because can, Canada is just not like on the worldwide boxing scene. Like, right. what Canadian do you know that was like that fought Floyd Mayweather, or what Canadian do you know that fought like? Okay. Mike Tyson. But you're still 20, 22 in the whole world. 22 in the whole world. But, right. like, see, none of the top guys, the, the big money fights, they don't want to fight me because if they beat me, they beat who? Some Canadian guy? Right. If they lose to me, well, fuck, they just lost to who? That's what I was saying. You're almost, you're so dangerous, you worked yourself into a position yeah. that's kind of weird. And, and, like, even though, let's say they got, let's say I'm fighting a guy, let's say I get matched up. They're trying to get matched up against the number one cruiserweight in the world, and he had 300 amateur there's a cra fights. There's a the dude who's the number one has a fucking insane record. Uh, cruiserweight? Yeah, I um, think so. I was looking at it. It was like I'm not sure who's number one now. I don't know, but but it like, like it was getting close to the fire. even if he's like, of course he's going to be more skilled yeah. and um, and more experienced and all that stuff, right? But that one punch power thing. It's it's very hard to get matched against top guys when you have that. Well, they yeah, don't well, want to risk when, it. Yeah, exactly. I was you gonna know? say when so, you're another promoter, like you don't want to you don't want to play with that kind of fire. No, you, know what you I mean? don't want to. Like, you don't want to. You, you need to be certain that that mm -hmm. like think about how certain you would have to be to be a guy that's like my guy 
is going to destroy him. Yeah. There's we not a lot of people on Earth that are in, in, at the level that you're at. No. Like, regardless of what the ranking is, regardless of, you know, I feel like even if you, you fought with top contenders in the, in the entire world, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, people are getting, like, million-dollar, you know, multi-million dollar payouts. Mm-hmm. You stepping in the rim, ring with them is danger. Do you think that there's Where any I, kind of benefit from, like, a like a major, like, social media push to be like, look how impressive this fighter is. Huge, and right these now. guys won't take him on because mm-hmm. of how well he's doing. Have you doing. ever tried anything like, like that? Like, I like, pulled cause Jake I, Paul stunt when I well, called him out. Well, out. exactly, because that got a lot of comments and shit. Yeah. But obviously, Jake Paul is not in this to fight an extremely, you know, top level boxer that's gonna fucking ruin his career. Because the as soon as Jake Paul loses, the all the attention around that pretty much gets thrown out the window. Oh yeah, right. It's because it's, it's the, yeah, it's like oh, this guy's a YouTuber and he just mm-hmm. knocked out a uh, professional, you know, a professional fighter. That was never a boxer in the first place, but you no, know, the people that are really riding for him and on his side, they don't care about that. But most people that are watching that want to see him lose anyway. Yeah. But like, um, I'm just wondering, like, it, what it, it, is it a matter of like, because you say that there's these 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 other boxers that would be, if you were able to be paired up against them and beat them, would put you in a bigger light for you to get bigger fights. Is I wonder if like community pressure from Instagram and, and co- people commenting and stuff would be the thing that would make them say, okay, fine, like, you know, we we're seeing a lot it. of people. It, we should, it seems that. to be that way yeah. now. We should set that, up the that's how, that's how that shit works, because it's yeah. like, this guy won't take a fight with Ryan because mm-hmm. they're scared to lose and ruin the record. Look at this compilation of him knocking out a bunch of people. No, no, no it's crazy, though. You know. We could probably, like, straight up do, like, a super cut of you just Knocking people's fucking heads oh, yeah. off. My my right? highlight reel and, and, like, and pay some huge. Instagram account like three hundred dollars right. to pump it out for like three days. Yeah, yeah. If, uh, that's uh, probably uh, what uh, I got to uh, do. To be honest, honestly. With you. Like, but but, it, but so uh, so whose responsibility is that? Is that is that your? Is that up to you or is it like is the promotional I will company? Help you do that. I, yeah, I like, think that like the promoters put on the fight card. They put on the they fights. get the, they, they organize they match the, the fights. They or, yeah. yeah, what you said. Um, but as far as like pr- promoting like my highlight reel, right. Like I don't know who that is. Is that guess, up to you? I guess that's up to me. And or it would be yes. up to like a PR guy. I'm, I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. I can. I, I have feel all the like ability to help you put some yeah, shit together. You, if you, you have I never any even ideas, thought you, you, you would online. be good for that for sure. Dude, absolutely. Well, I mean, that's all. Mm-hmm. All I was doing before behind another company. I got all <laughs> footage of like all my pro fights. So like, Dude, you and wanna, there's you a wanna, lot of knockouts no one even saw. You want to put some money behind like a fucking like a serious. I know I mean, how to run those ads and shit. Well, like, well, yeah. not even ads, dude. Like, it, like there's like big Instagram accounts, like you know, yeah. you know, fifty million followers, where it's like, if you pay them a couple hundred bucks yeah. to post anything, I mean, even a thousand. If, bucks if, if you can get a video of you knocking like nine guys or thirteen guys out rather, mm-hmm. in a row. It's like, this guy should fight Jake Paul. <laughs> and then you get like 300 million views on that Will video. Will Jake Paul live? Will Jake Paul <laughs> might not live. <laughs> no, that'd be crazy though. Let's start that right now, anyone watching. Hashtag Will Jake Paul live? Put a fucking compilation of you knocking all 13 people out. Straight he might up, not. Dude. If I fought him, he might not live. He might die. But if it, but if it got I'm not. I'm not even trying to be funny. Look, he, yeah, he no, might dude, die. No, I, I, so if, I you, if, if you, if you, if like, if there was a moment right now, if this could be the moment where you call out Jake Paul and tell him. What's on the line for him Not to be just able to Jake fight Paul. you? But, no, but it's just, just right now. Okay. Yeah. If what would you say to Jake Paul if you were in the opportunity and he was all ears listening, and you could challenge him to a fight? Like, what would you say? I don't even know. Um, <laughs> you might die. <laughs> like he, he might. Yeah. But really. like, he would have to. It would be so bad for him. It would. He, you it know would be what? So what awesome if he knocked to see. me out? Yeah. <laughs> what if he just like boom <laughs> slapped me? I'd be Jake like, Paul, you, know you could knock out a thirteen and zero professional boxer. <laughs> no. right now. why would you not take this opportunity? You know what? You know what? The fucked up thing is, it could happen. I could. Well, yes, it's, anything it's, can it's, happen. It's, anything yeah. can happen. It's it's He's war. He's two hundred right? pounds. Anything. Look, He's athletic. It right? could I, happen. I love I love ancient Roman wars and there's times armies of ten thousand have taken out armies of a hundred thousand. You know what I mean? The one punch factor is always there. But when you're one on one, the odds are way crazier. One punch can end it all, you know what I mean? It doesn't oh, matter yeah. who you are. But that was, but that was the interesting thing with Floyd Mayweather and him is that mm-hmm. it's like there's this guy Logan. that's like Logan, forty yeah. pounds heavier than than and him so, naturally. If he really, honestly, if Logan Paul ended uh, landed the right punch, that was game over. It was. It doesn't 100%. matter. Like you could hit me right. You could, 
first punch knock me out right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's just there's a weight difference where I could give I could give you the perfect punch right now and not do a goddamn thing to you mm-hmm. because we're so different in weight structures right? and frames. It, 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 ex- it, exactly. It's where, serious. Yeah. Like, but but you versus him would be like. Somebody that you should actually fight in terms of weight and size. Well, I yeah, think that a lot you know of what I mean. Size. And, but actually, but, those guys are heavier than me. The pals. Yeah, I, I think they're me. on steroids, bro. Oh, like I've spent a lot on. of I've spent a lot of time in the in the gym looking at what you know people on and off different kinds of steroids. A lot and of I, steroids. And I've, and I've played yeah, with some man. of them myself, mm-hmm. like Test, Anivar, and something else. I can't remember what the other thing was. Uh, uh, Diana Ball. Okay, like that. I never uh, heard D- of D- that. D-ball, what people call D-ball. D-ball? I remember people D-ball, taking that in high school. I, I did D-ball. <laughs> D-ball. Yeah, like, I did D-ball. And they get all pimply and shit. Yeah, well, no, dude. Well, the thing is, in your, when you're in high school, you're drinking. Oh, when it's you're true. when you're ingesting orally, like yeah. the steroid has to pass through your liver. Yeah. So that's enough damage on your liver, but when you're in high school, you're drinking like crazy. So mm-hmm. you're drinking. All that has to process through your liver, and you're on D-ball. Well, and, you dude, you can literally kill yourself in, like, your 30s. It's fucked up. But, like, D-ball, if you're prop... Well, the best way to do steroids is to shoot them. But anyway, I can't remember what my main point was here. Anyway, they're on steroids, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can tell when you look at somebody's structure, the veins coming out, man. It's the hardness of the man. muscles. Yeah. Like, when you're at, like... If you're at, like, 20... Uh, sorry, if you're at, like, 12% body fat, mm-hmm. and you look hard as hell... Yeah. That's not right. No. You know, I've seen you lean as hell. And you, and you stay in a... Like, for my somebody diet, that though, I know... Man. I know oh. that you don't, like... Like, I've dieted and tracked mm-hmm. literally every calorie that I've eaten on my wall, on, like, post-it notes on my wall. Like, yeah. I'm going to eat this many calories over this many weeks. I'm going to eat this, 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 this on this day, whatever. And it got into a certain leanness. leanness. Mm-hmm. But I remember that one day that you – I was literally in the time that I, I put a camera on a gimbal. Mm-hmm. You ran so far away from me that we had to drive around for, like, a while to find you. Yeah. <laughs> I think and then I remember, I remember you, I remember I remember you were just, footage. like, tying your shoes on, like, a fucking side rail on the road. And I was like, this guy is shredded as hell. And, yeah. then, I, and, then, and then I remember investigating, asking you questions, like, how do you eat? Yeah. And it wasn't even that, like, complicated. But you're, like, shredded as fuck, but you don't have, like, a complicated uh, method about doing it. No, sim- I keep things so simple. That's, like, that's the thing, right? Like, simple life. Just, like, it, It's being a fucking diet, human being at the, at the basis. Yeah, like but I. You eat, gotta have a balance of that, I think. But like, I don't think there. When I'm like ready for a fight, when I'm a week out from a fight, there's no way I could be in any better like shape, like like physically, without something. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like if you see someone, there is athletic, like especially like darker skinned people, they look more shredded. You know what I mean? But like when you see like a Russian, well, I, and I he's know, got man, veins bodybuild. popping here and shit. It's like you're on juice. Yeah, There's oh, no dude, if, you, if you're a ghost white and you, you look crazy. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and you know, the first thing you look at, and I always got to, because I, ne- I I did bodybuilding for a while. Mm-hmm. I did I did all of my actual growth before I ever, you know, I was, like, partying and doing whatever the fuck I wanted to before I ever touched a steroid. So I did all that real growth naturally and stuff, mm-hmm. right? The big thing, the main thing you look for is shoulders. Shoulders, yeah. People's shoulders just look like cannonballs. Yeah. You go on D ball, your shoulders look insane. <laughs> yeah, I'm shoulders, always, bro, but, I'm this thing. But, but I have though. crazy, I have crazy <laughs> shoulders just genetically. Yeah. Um, but my uh, all all the time that I was working out, I, I had been accused of juicing, doing yeah. shit that I even my father one time because I I flipped on him one time. He's like. Are you doing steroids? Are you fucking flipping on me because you're on steroids? I'm like, <laughs> your dad's pharmacist of the year. Yeah, well, my dad's like, yeah, so my dad's a pharmacist. Steroids. He knows like everything that a drug does to you. So he's like, yeah, you're on steroids. I'm like, no, I'm not. You're just being a dickhole. I'm, s- I'm and signed I'm with uh, Vada. But what? what is that? I'm what signed with Vada. What's, What's Vada? The drug what? testing, so they could show up any time of the day to drug test me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a Vada. Man. When I won the the um, WBC belt. They, they have, like, a mandatory thing so that they can test at any time. They test before mm-hmm. the fight, after the fight. Well, like, who they, said they that you're, um, this is random as fuck. 
Oh, set up your Wikipedia. I, page. I know that you're not on steroids. I can literally <laughs> no, tell you that you're not on steroids. Imagine being on steroids. Who set up your Christ. Wikipedia page? If you're on steroids, I don't know. Yeah, I'm like, did you just wake up one day up. and you had a Wikipedia? Yeah. One day I made my own Wikipedia like three years ago, bro. I had it for a month. <laughs> I was flexing. I was like, I'm on Wikipedia now, bro. All my information's on here. And then they took it down. They're like, you're not ready for Wikipedia yet. You're not ready. Fuck. How, do you gotta, how, do you, how are you ready? Know, bro. I don't know. I think you need like a certain news source, like getting verified on Instagram or some shit. It's pro- How do you get that? You got called in by Wikipedia. You want to know what it is? I probably want to know what it probably is. is, is Wikipedia is an open source. Like, it's it's free. Yeah. Like, says I'm worth 1.5 mil on fucking line. I was like, I you know what? You know, you know what's crazy though? <laughs> I, w- I was You're worth 1.5 mil. Yeah, online that's on the internet. That's, that's sick though. Internet. I was gonna, I was gonna you should leverage that. You know, because I would also I'll, a lot of other things yeah. on the internet too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. This Why Rosicky smokes uh, meth. <laughs> uh, but I remember, I remember, I was because I was doing the, I was doing the Google before I was reading all the the most uh, searched up articles and everything. Yeah. And um, I, I was gonna do that because I was like, I feel like Wikipedia page. I, websites that have the net worths are definitely usually not accurate. So I was like, should I? I'm gonna look at. No, I was like, I'm not even looking this up. But I was looking at the Wikipedia page. So like, how did? Like, that's that's like, man, you got a Wikipedia. I mean, it makes sense. You're a fucking. I actually top don't even rank. know how long I've had one. Did you just Google your well, name? Do you I've Google your name seen. regularly? You ever like do a little Google? With the I'll Wikipedia, go on there check Boxrec. Yeah, oh, like that's what I was once on in a while, yeah. but well, not bo- lately. Boxrec is kind of like the uh, official. You want to look up? I'm some, scared you, to Google you my name. Up. I don't know what the fuck is gonna come Sorry? up there. I'm kind of sketched out to Google my name because you no, never know. You don't want to see it, bro. I don't want to no, see it. No, there's the, you. You got a good Google. <laughs> Do I? You got a Google. I got a. It'll go- get worse. Yeah, I got a, I got a Google too, man. It says my name says musical art. It has my links and everything. I think if like you have enough streams in Spotify to like show it up. But there's another Mitchell Bailey, and mm-hmm. he's like a football player in the states. <laughs> and I, if you if you go to Google Images, like most of the pictures are me. So but another guy. If you scroll down a bit, you mm-hmm. do see this guy. Guy's face and his face has been around for like seven years, bro. And somehow he managed to get in the fucking top four picks of me, bro. I don't know if people were looking up this guy. <laughs> he got like a fucking curly. I'm fucking coming for this guy, bro. But he you had get like, him out of there. Yeah, but he, he made it to like the four. Fuck you, other dude. Mitchell Bailey. But I, I was pissed about that. But no, you got the yeah. Shout out to I, I can feel it. Like one time, dude, I went to a fucking Guitar Hero uh, tournament. I hate. When you go to those, I just went to watch people. I, 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 I could be the fire and flames. Yeah, this is the thing. Can you there's, play that, bro? there's one other person in this town with my name. One other there guy. Is too. Yeah, there's one other there. guy. He's like, he's, he's like probably your age. Everybody hates him. I actually almost got the shit beat out of me. I never met another. I almost got the shit beat out of me one time. I was at fucking Brian. Starts with an M house. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. And so I'm. We were like studying for a project or some shit. And I'm sitting at the computer, and then his brother and some other guy bust in the door, and are like ready to beat the shit out of me. And I turn around, they're like, "Who the fuck are you?" And they're like, "Oh, I thought you were the other guy." <laughs> <laughs> the other, the other bitch will turn. I was gonna beat the shit bro. out of you, right? But then there was this other time that I went to a fucking uh, Guitar Hero competition. At, uh, I had no idea they had Guitar Hero. Yeah, where no, no, where this were is, those? This is like Guitar. Those? No, no, no. This was years ago. Ryan's gonna pull I was up like a kid. Gonna, boxing. I was a kid. No, this is this is, low, this is low key one of the scariest moments of my life. I walked into this Guitar Hero competition. I want to see people ball out on the Xbox. You know, mm-hmm. I played Guitar Hero like three times. I was just there because I was friends with Logan the Tulip, the uh, infamous bridge jumper. <laughs> but uh, they were like, "Yeah, through the fire and the flames, Mitchell Turner versus." This guy, and I guess he just left. Mm-hmm. Oh, you were actually there, and I was there. Yeah. <laughs> and literally everybody in the room turned around and looked at me, and I was like, "I've never played this before." <laughs> did you play it? Did you do it? No, I, was, oh, I just walked out of the room. It. I was like, "What do I do?" <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That would have been so much better if you just <laughs> went off. <laughs> <out. laughs> no. I guess that guy had like a notorious uh, name for himself. He sucked. Like, he, he must suck, dude. dude what are you doing? How you doing, bro? Somebody Tell me I'm doing good. I actually want to ask you questions. Let's, hey, let's what do you talk. listen to when you work out? Here we go. Oh. <laughs> 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 That's fine. That I do. I, little, I love that song, though. Like, that one. The one uh, that we did? You guys yeah. did? Like, I actually, like, like, not to watch the video, I just listened to the actual song. Mm. Yeah. But, um. That's good, though, man. I feel like that song. Up. I feel like that song. Uh, that video and that song were, like. 
I was fucking. I like. I still see that getting more views. Like it on will. YouTube, I feel like I, I. I don't know if it's because, like, when you put upload a video on YouTube, you gotta put in all the keywords and shit. I don't know. I must have put Ryan Rosicki a few times because I'm sure, like, as you continue to, you know, make more of a name for yourself and everything, that video actually does come up on YouTube when you look up your oh, name. Yeah, it does, so yeah. I think like it gets views from that, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah, what else? Yeah, what else? Like, I watch. I walk out to friggin' Viking War chants and stuff, crazy mm. stuff like that. But then, but uh, my li- my playlist, it's insane. It'll go from a Viking War chant, rap, to Johnny Cash, to Elvis, back to rap. You're listening to some intense shit. I used to listen to these oh, videos right. when I would work out. Of like people Taylor, literally Taylor shitting in shitting in your ear. Yeah, Taylor like, Swift <laughs> trap. Like you're like remix. you're a piece of shit if you can't do this. <laughs> no, like I you literally that, used to bro. listen to that kind of shit while I worked and not here. What what, what uh what kind so of what what some intense stuff? What rap do you listen shit to? What rap? Yeah, like I like what? um Pop Smoke lately. Okay. Oh, really? Pop Smoke. Uh, cool. But I like the old school stuff too. Yeah. You know. I noticed in that Instagram story you posted before, there was some kind of rap song playing. It sounded like oh, some like Ride Us by, Fit, by Eminem. Okay, yeah. I feel like you listen. Do you listen to DMX? I feel yeah, like I like DMX. I feel like yeah, you yeah, listen yeah, to DMX. Yeah, 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 that yeah. makes sense. Rest Rest in, like, well, that, that's kind of what I was just trying to say. I got a, a, a slight tangent. Pop smoke makes sense though, because it kind of sounds like Fifty Cent, and it's like I, I feel like, like that's good, like workout music, some mm-hmm. heavy stuff. Um, what What are some things that you are interested in that people wouldn't expect from you? Vintage clothes. Okay, like 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 forties, like like no, like, like uh, like eighties right now. Okay, I feel like eighties like clothes. Far back. Like, like my, after my fight in Vancouver, uh, me and Dion, my fiance, we went into like a vintage clothes store in Vancouver, and they had like all like, like some of it was like covered in paint and stuff, but it was like from the eighties, like you know, so, like sweaters without the hoods on them, and like, right, yeah, like jean jackets stuff like that. I'm like, fuck. Do you ever feel like man. you could be like you could transition as from a boxer into a, a model? I've been asked this before. Really? I don't know. I just I only asked that strictly based off of your interest <laughs> in eighties fashion, but because I was thinking that because you were you like got I'm a bunch gonna, of I'm tattoos, gonna, I, I'm your gonna, I'm gonna, jaw is like crazy. I'm gonna bo- you're like I'm gonna box. That makes 30. sense. It's like what? What are you gonna what, do when you're like thirty four? Yeah, like what? What do you do? You have any kind of ideas for what you would like to do after boxing? Based off of that's your a interest. crazy question because like I feel like a, any any fighter. You, you don't really look at the end. I feel like right. you can't be fully focused end. on what you're doing if you're thinking about that. If you if you if you're not a hundred percent into it, mm-hmm. you can't. You're gonna get hurt. That's but ama- no, you, I don't know. That's amazing because I I don't think I know for my my own and I don't know about yourself, but like I don't know if I have something that I'm fully invested in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where it's like where where really am I looking towards next? I think well, like, just have you're a at. bunch of kids. Have a yeah. whack. Have them. a bunch of kids. Like twenty. Oh, dude. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on that train. Yeah, I got yeah. three right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but third like, on the way. Like get 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 the money from from boxing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then pumping like, into the children. Just have all kinds of kids. Would you ever look at like doing like a clothing line or something like that? Clothing line. I feel like that's a really easy thing to monetize when you have a amount of people following you to some degree because that's the easiest way that they can support you and kind of rep you because they're like oh i fuck with what he's doing and all mm-hmm. this shit do you have Especially merch i did i know i did think about those so I, i'd like like a you could like you could make a uh, yeah if you want to uh, again like I, i'm not trying to this plug myself business pitch <laughs> yes but no, well i mean i guess why yeah live business yeah. pitch but no if you want to do some clothes or whatever i'll i'll do the design you want to like be because down. the thing is like you like you were saying before you know the first fight you got 5k you're like what the fuck you could pull up to Whoa. that fight and sell 5k <laughs> and merch too yeah right that, well that's where you the know, guys make their big money man like the, the sell, and, and, and the merch thing is, is you don't you don't need to sell most. merch while you're fighting you can sit on your couch that, and have yeah. fucking thousand dollars in merch sales come through your it's phone it's a couple like yeah. really like catchy logos and just shit that people would want to actually wear mm-hmm. 100% um what would you see yourself have you ever thought about like what you would see yourself doing after you kind of Make the money from boxing and and, and, and kind of have your legacy solidified. Would mm. you would you start up like a gym of your oh, own? Yeah. I think that's a that's gonna happen. Yeah, regardless, I gotta I gotta like definitely gotta train some people. Dude. Yeah, You're, train yeah. some up and comers. You know what I mean? Pass on what I what I learned. Would you keep and stuff. it in Cape Breton? Yeah, yeah. Always. I'm not I'm not leaving Cape Breton. Really? Neither, no, you never no. had like the kind of. Uh, Desire to just go see, like, do, I, I, would you do you want to travel the world? Like, do you have an interest in seeing other places? None, man. I, I, I remember feel like, like Cape Breton's an untapped territory it for is. a lot of things. I mean, I mean, as far as business, yes, mm-hmm. but I mean, like, would you like to use some kind of bigger money that you would make in the future to be able to see? 
different continents and, and just experience that for yourself? Um, I always wanted to go to, like, Alaska. That's to hunt. <laughs> I want to go grizzly bear. That's an odd first choice. Yeah. They go cool. hunt some bear. Well, yeah, but you're, you're into like hunting, hunt, right? Yeah, so I like to go hunting go all around the world. Like, you know, do that. But mm-hmm. other than that, like, I don't know. I just like it here. It's not really I want to go hunting. Yeah. I've never hunted in my life. You must have a family that has hunted, right? Oh, yeah. So, like, like I remember you, you told me a story that I'm not going to bring up because I don't know if it's entirely legal. Yeah. But when I'm like, I watched. Did you know who Steve had those like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I watch. I wa- Everyone I know that hunts has those stories. <laughs> okay, but, 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 but so I, tell story. I, I watch Stephen Ranella's show all the time. Yeah, and I remember one time going to get my haircut, and I think you were in the room as well mm-hmm. at uh, Mark's, and yeah, uh, yeah, I mean. and and everybody was like chatting you up. Everybody's all over you. You know what I mean? You're talking about like some hunting stories and whatever, and uh, I'm just like, I want that, but I never had anybody in my family that like. You gotta be kind of like, like raised into it. I yeah, think. yeah, I yeah. Think so. yeah. But but I, I remember going fishing one time with my dad, and mm-hmm. he was way out of his place. Like he had no idea what he was doing. Yeah. But I was like, I want to go fishing. So he bought me a fishing rod. Yeah. And we like went somewhere. I didn't catch a fish. It was stupid as fuck. It's difficult, man. <laughs> but like, but I remember being in that barber shop, and mm-hmm. everybody's like, like I said, everybody's all over you, and they're like. Oh, you can come up to my cabin this time, Ryan. It's fucking blah blah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. come on up here. And you're like telling all these stories. I'm like, God damn, I just want to kill something and cool. eat it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to yeah. fucking suck the soul out of this being and become a big man. I think it. it uh, <laughs> I think it played a role, man. Like when I, the way I grew up, like hard work, cutting wood. And then for yeah. supper, deer meat and potatoes that I Absolutely, grew. Absolutely, dude. Like, that, that does something. There's you're a difference doing... between farm-grown fucking beef that stands around all day and eats its own ass and, and, and something that's in the woods fucking going crazy. Did you say you grew your own potatoes, too? Oh, fuck yeah. I used to... Go, my job was, uh, like, my grandfather's in the back. We got, like... There was huge fields. And the whole fields would be potatoes, right? And, like, every year when you when you rake... Like, you got to rip up all the ground with the... Gra- mm-hmm. with the, the you, were, you were straight up farming. Oh yeah, like oh, it, I, cool. you had to rip up all the ground with the plow, right? And then the big rocks would come up every year. There'd be a bunch of rocks, so like I'm talking like three football fields of rocks. And uh, I had the two pails, and I'm like a little skinny kid, and I'd have to fill fill the um, the pails with rocks, and then carry them to the end of the field and dump them all day long, man. And you wonder and why you can like, knock people out. Oh, hold <laughs> That's just, some like, hardcore shit, dude. Yeah, and I'm like, the you more... You were training at four, you didn't even know. Oh, dude. I was, I was serious. <laughs> Seriously, that's <laughs> a, those farmer walks. So, like, then, I, like, I, I got into farming recently. Yeah, farmer and it's walk. Like, <laughs> it, it's, yeah, yeah, that's a, they hold the dumbbell. Well, I mean, realistically, you hold the fucking uh, wheelbarrow full yeah. of rocks to the end of the field, you know what I mean? But Dump I used them. to do things, man, before I even knew what I was doing, like, it's just weird how it worked well, out, but you, I would pick you, up rocks. You build these regimens of, like, physical activity. I know what you're saying. But, but, I, but it, I would pick probably... up rocks or, like, pick up firewood, like, because I cut a lot of hardwood, right? And I'd have to throw it, like, let's say, like, I have to throw the log over. The trailer's over here. I can pick the log up and carry it over or hum the fucker over and just keep going that way and get it done quicker. Yeah, yeah. So I, le- I started to learn at a young age, man. If I throw the wood and I turn my body and then let it go, it goes further. And how's that body turning translated into fucking hit? It's exactly how you throw a punch. Wow! So I've, I've, been, yeah. like, I've been using the same mechanics my yeah. whole life. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like your whole you know? story, like, from the beginning when we talked about before you went into amateur boxing and everything and, like, the fights you were getting into and all that stuff, it feels like it kind of all correlates from one thing to the next. Even, mm-hmm. like, by you mentioning this, is like, a lot of the stuff that you were doing, not even being aware of it as a younger kid, made sense for you to be able to like train and maybe even develop that that kind of like more powerful punch than most people when they would get into a street fight. Yeah. When you were talking about how your friend realized that, and then it kind of turns into you getting in these incidents, you get sent to cell side, all this stuff, and then you, you know, it, it it really almost is a perfect story that that kind of all blends in together up to the point that you're at right now as a professional boxer Mm -hmm. where you start like this is how you grew up you know you you got into those like when you were hanging out in sydney and it it, it really is interesting and it's like it, it kind of really shows how like you know people talk about like fate and all that shit but like it really does make sense like you your your current position is just based off of your previous Everything, experiences and I, actions that kind of led you to that yeah, point. Yeah, it was just like what you become is what you've been through. 
It's really weird. Like I'm. It, it's super weird because you don't want to take a big it, dose of shrooms and start thinking like that. No, I'm exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, it, you, it, yeah, it, it's it, like, it, whoa, this is, it, am I God? That's crazy. The it's thing is, is <laughs> hind- hindsight. God? Hindsight is crazy. Like you can look back <laughs> and be like, everything that I've been through culminated into what I am right now, and it's true. Mm-hmm. But like you, but you don't look do you forward like that. that. You, you don't are. look forward at like your next shitty opportunity. Like I had a fucking terrible mm-hmm. day today. Like, I like unre- unrelated to this, but it's like I'm not gonna look at that right now or during my day and be like, that's gonna contribute to who I am tomorrow. You know, but what? I might look back at it in like ten years and be like, that that shit that I went through that day mm-hmm. helped me become who I am now. So th- in in the same way, you picking up all those rocks, I used to not for the same reason but my whole backyard was full of elephant ears and rocks and I used to just carry them out of there because I hated them being there and I would build forts on them and shit so I'd like move shit around yeah. but I used to move shit all the time and do all this stuff that made me stronger as a physically stronger as a person mm-hmm. that helps me now where I'm like or, or late, uh, you know later down the road where I started powerlifting and, dead, and uh, bodybuilding and stuff I was already strong as a person mm-hmm. physically Yeah, you know what I mean where that built me into where I was even though I didn't like retrospectively, yeah, it makes sense. But like looking at it from when I was a four-year-old picking up big rocks and getting them out of the way, you don't think about it like that. No, you don't. You know what, what you mean? But before what you're going like... through builds you into the person oh. that you're going to become. Oh yeah, that like it, there's like a quote. I don't know the quote exactly, but I just know like the gist of it is something that I basically live by is that it's like the life is about failure and how you respond to it. So like success, you don't get too high on the success. Mm-hmm. I used to get really high on the success. That's mm-hmm. what kind of mm-hmm. screwed me up and ended up me being becoming like a pretty well, I was pretty much like an alcoholic two years ago. Like, like in, which, in the midst of your professional career? Oh yeah. Yeah. Don't don't ask me how. I was training like that and drinking and uh, I wouldn't drink but like you train and you would drink alcohol. I shouldn't say I was an alcoholic because I wasn't. I just uh, exaggerated. You know yeah. what? It's not that I drank a lot. When I did drink I drank a lot. Right. And I yeah. did stu- stupid shit. Every single time. I man. feel that. Dude. So it's not like I had a problem with drinking. I had a problem when I drank. Right. Yeah. Well, that's you know it's very I mean? easy when you drink, especially when you're accomplishing some things, that you you kind of have more time to reflect on what you've achieved, mm-hmm. and then you get excited about it. And you, you talk to people. Everybody's about excited about it. And then everyone it. hypes you up. Take a shot. Take, take a, a shot. shot. Oh shot. man, you're shot. gonna be shot. killing oh, it. I can't wait to your boxing guy. Hey, 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 take some drinks. And, and, and it's uh, it's very uh. easy to get caught up in that and be feeling like you can like there's certain ways to justify like I'm just living this life because mm-hmm. I'm succeeding. This is what comes with my hard work. But after a while, I mean, yeah, you wake up the next day and you're like, why did I say that? Or like, oh. why did I have that argument? Buddy, let why me did tell that you. shit happen? You know, like. But but yeah, I mean. Like you, yeah, you get too high in the hype. Actually, a buddy of mine, Brandon Brewer, is a really good professional fighter. He told me when I first turned pro, he was the first guy to tell me. Like I'm talking pro debut. I had my mm-hmm. pro debut on his card. Right? He's like, like whatever. Is he from here? He's from New Brunswick. Okay. But this is before I had any hype behind me. Sure. He, some reason he knew that I was going to be a good pro. Like, and he said, when it comes, don't get too high on your own hype. Don't believe it and don't listen to anybody. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't really listen to him, and then. After I won the Canadian title and I started getting all this hype around here, and at that time, obviously, I was going to bars and drinking and stuff, and like people buying me shots, and I was like, it's my ego was like growing, you know, and me not even knowing it and not not acting like it. I wasn't walking around saying I can knock anyone out. This is my record. Look at my record. I wasn't like a like that, but inside, without talking about it, I felt it growing, right? And when I drank, it was like, whew, like lose control. The ego just take you over. Right. But I had to be humbled right back down. And have my ego absolutely obliterated to understand what what Brandon was talking about. Don't believe your own height. Now I'm like, I don't even give a fuck about my height. That's probably the who can obliterate your ego. Myself. <laughs> okay, good. I did. <laughs> okay. I destroyed myself, and then I rebuilt good. it, and then. Like, but you like talk down to yourself? You no, I, just I feel like everybody does shit. that. That's actually a shit. good. That's a good question because I feel like everybody has that. You know what I mean? Well, where regardless Everybody of your does, accomplishments, man. men, women, sh- we all got yeah. e- e- everybody's looking down at themselves, picking everything apart. But it's oh, like, yeah. I feel like when people look at somebody like yourself, they're like, "This guy's a fucking animal. He just beat beat his way through everything. Like that, he doesn't have that fear." But it's like everybody's the same. I think you're probably the everybody's most powerful the when you don't have an ego, because you could think the straight, you think the most clearest, 
I mean, you need a little Probably bit of ego as far as recognition of his own. But it's ego. like you know you're I mean? able to see everything for what it is and not mm. let any of your personal ego impact that, which is essentially a weakness. You care too much about your pride and everything, then you're not going to put yourself in certain positions that you could succeed in. And then, oh, if you, if you, you walk know, into yeah. anything based off ego, you're not really going to yeah. succeed unless you're just crazy. Like mm-hmm. if you were you, mm-hmm. and then you walk into something off ego. You might succeed, <laughs> but like depending on the situation, you know what I mean. If you were you and you had the ego that you do have, yeah. and you walked into fucking editing a video or something, it's like, uh, you know, I don't really know anything about this. But when you're <laughs> gonna go knock somebody's head off, it works. But oh, it's confidence. It's all fair. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be yeah. delusional, but you want to be. Oh yeah, definitely. So, be well, that's what I was saying. Ego is mm-hmm. is important, but it's, I have like I, it has I applications. Find, I have confidence in certain things, and then in other areas, it's like. I almost don't believe when people tell me like you were, for example, you were telling me about the skill earlier, right? And a lot of people talk about it, like a lot of like real boxing fans talk about like, man, you got crazy. Like that last fight, I was doing, like doing Archie Moore cross arm defense. Dude, no one's yeah. done that since the 1950s. And I was doing these things and, and trying them out. Like, um, that takes a lot of skill to pull these things off, right? But I don't see it like that. I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna try that. That's why I was saying fight. earlier. I said, <laughs> I said before you fight. start, <laughs> yeah, before you said, the first time, man, yeah, yeah. give that. Dude, try, before right? before you said, I think I'm gonna fight in my 30s. I could yeah. see, dude, I could literally see, like, this is the thing. There's not a lot of guys that fight into like their 40s and 50s mm-hmm. that have the power that you do. Well, power is the last thing to go. It, Exactly, dude. You had that your whole life. You know what I mean. I, I still, when, dude. When I, I, I just started working out a couple of weeks ago. Fight some people at the retirement home. Huh? Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. No, but no, but no I'm I, never going to retirement home. Fuck no, that. But, but I, I started working out a couple yeah. of weeks ago, and it's not like I pick up like ground zero. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you have something yeah, that yeah. other people don't have. Like I, for I'm not a big guy, but for the the size that I have, pound for pound, the amount of weight that I can lift is not normal. In the same context, the amount of weight that you can transfer to somebody's fucking jaw is not normal. You know what I mean? Like, you can destroy people's faces. Not everybody can do that to you. That's that's mm-hmm. never going to go away. No. It's a, it's a weird thing, but, like, see, it's, it took me a long time to learn how to separate that, like, knowing that oh. from everyday life. You Sorry, I, mean? I got distracted from my point, but you have that. Mm-hmm. Right, you have that, and you're also technical. Mm-hmm. Not everybody has that, and they're technical. And I don't think people really, like I said before, like I don't think people look at you as like a technical fighter. But I've seen you fight live a couple times, and really be able to like in person process like the decisions that you're gonna make mm-hmm. and how you're going about it. And it's like you're not just like I'm strong as fuck. I'm gonna take this guy's head off. It's like how am I gonna get there? Yeah, it's funny, though, I, because I don't have that much confidence in that, that technical aspect. I know I'm a thinker. I feel like you don't, but I feel like yeah. you have the kind of career that you could be like a 45-year-old boxer with the technicality that you actually have. Yeah. With the power that you have. You know what I mean? Like, you could be the guy that's like 45 and some up-and-comer's coming out and he's going to think he's going to rack your fucking brain and you just pick him apart and then all of a sudden you hit him with a bomb. Like, but, there's not you know, a lot of guys like you. I could, fu- I probably could. But tell that to the bruiser. Like, like what I mean is, I could think all those things, but we talked about it earlier. As soon as I get clipped, boom, in the chin, and every, I get a little white flash. It's mm-hmm. different, yeah. That's it. Like, yeah. It's like I get, I'm sent into the, to the back seat, it's, 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 well, and it's I'm just fight, watching it, what's happening. When and somebody actually hits you, the fight or flight comes in. Yeah, just But the thing is, fight or flight for Ryan Rosicki is different for fight or flight. If somebody clocked me in the jaw... I'm going to run away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if somebody clocks you in the jaw and they hurt you, yeah. you're going to end their life. You, you know, know what I used what I mean? to always tell my buddies when we used to, like, go out partying and dr- drinking and fighting and all that? I was like, if anyone ever hits me and I get knocked out, everybody just don't help me. Run. Because yeah. if that guy knocks me out, you guys got to yeah, go. That guy, that you guys got to fucking get out of here. Terrible. <laughs> that's a great way to explain that, to be honest. It's like, Let, leave me. Just leave down. me. Go away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Save yourselves, boys. I mean, no, you, you have this 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 uh, contained power, man. It's impressive. Is it's there anything that you are interested in aside from boxing? Like that? Like what are your, what are your things aside from this right now? That right now, I'm yeah. not a big like I like the way my brain works is like you probably you might be the same way because you you got you excelled at your at your craft too. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you focus on something, 
like literally the whole world goes black around it and you're just like <laughs> on that one thing right. so my brain for whatever reason boxing always is is my main focus but i'll like zone in on things for example it could be rifles right now it's motorcycles so right now like i'm obsessed with fucking motorcycles and i can't i'll literally be up till 4 a.m watching watching videos on youtube of guys take them apart put them back together then i'll go and try to do it with mine oh, like yours, yeah. just 24 7 when did you get the one that you pulled up on that one i got like probably two weeks ago three weeks ago and it was crazy before ryan pulled up he messaged me and he was like you're probably gonna hear me and me and jason were sitting here and we're like and jason was like that's him and he pulled up <laughs> and then he missed the driveway we watched him drive down the street and then we're like we should probably go to the end of the driveway so we could fucking yeah uh, direct him in but uh so was that always something that you were interested in or just yeah. more recently i saw the terminator 2 when i was a kid and he's riding that Harley Fat Boy. Right. And I was like, I want one of those Harley Fat Boy. So it's funny because uh, a couple weeks ago, I bought a bike last year. I bought a, it's just a Suzuki 800 Cruiser, mm-hmm. right? I got that. And then I traded a couple hunting rifles for a Harley Sportster. So I had two bikes. And uh, But I always wanted that Harley Fat Boy that was on the Terminator. Anyway, that came the exact ac- bike. The exact bike. That's yeah. the bike I wanted. Anyways, I came across a really good deal. My plan was to flip this Harley I bought to get a Fat Boy, but then I'm like, okay. I can't get a Fat Boy okay, because, like, I'm working my, like, my goal is to be able to buy one, like, immaculate mint, right? And right. that's gonna cost a lot of money. And I did, I did like good flipping these bikes, and I probably had enough to to get the bike. Right. But I'm like. I want that to, to be the reward. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck just happened? This guy just know, blew a fire. What? Like, man. But, um, but no, like, yeah. I uh, I want to wait to the end of my career to get that bike. Because I want to okay. have something. You want to have something to look forward to. Yeah, basically. like a reward at the end yeah. rather than getting it now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely. But I, but I got a nice one now. It's a Harley Heritage 2006. It's a nice bike. So, like... Ideal scenario, you have your, you know, some of the biggest fights of your career. What what do you end up buying with the money that you get from it? Probably, I'd probably just get a log cabin, the mountains somewhere. Yes, sir. Take care of my family. Like I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't need much, man. Like, well, like in the Highlands in Cape Breton, would you like move to like Shetty Camp or somewhere? Oh, I love Waikagama. Yeah. I love white cog. I'm just like, Dude, I'm just trying to move that way, done man. vegan and grow weed for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, nothing <laughs> fancy, right you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just... Straight up. Mon- money? It's, I just want to take care of my family. Get the get the money in the bank. Get out. There's, like... I don't know. I probably always drive my O2 Duramax. Falling apart fucking thing. I saw you talking about that in that... Uh, podcast that you did with that dude yeah i actually had it up for sale yesterday up. really Two days ago, i put it up for sale well i get this is what happens i get mad at it like when it starts to <laughs> when it breaks i get mad and i'll fall the, you I'll put it you're like you know i'm getting rid of you you fucking green cocksucker you're gone you're on kijiji you're i'll on put kijiji. it up on kijiji <laughs> yeah, but then you kind of like that's right. acting right but then people <laughs> come to see it and they look at it and they're yeah, like, like i'll give you this for i don't want to get rid of it sorry buddy it's not for sale anymore i'm not kidding you like people like you've had people come and you told them that oh never mind yeah because they're serious about buying it this guy was on his way with like the like 12 grand for the truck you told him to turn around. i was like i can't sell my truck bud so i just went and fixed it and and i'm like i'm sorry i'll never sell you but no it's that's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. what type of truck oh it's a 2002 duramax i fucking love it i always wanted one since i was a kid and after my my last fight at center 200 i made enough and i just went and went and got it yeah that's must have been a good feeling right there oh yeah was better winning the fight or buying the truck? Mm. <laughs> Probably buying the truck. Because <laughs> I don't care about winning the fights. That's the, that's the thing about me. I'm like, I just like fighting. Do you know what I mean? Win or lose. Like, I you mean, like the sport of it. Like you like the. I like the sport of it. Yeah. I'm starting to I'm starting to lose the love for the sport of it a little bit. Not gonna lie, because of this, what's happening with boxing right now. I got faith that. You know, boxing will come back, and the people will pay more attention to the real fights rather than the circus fights. Because it's kind of the Paul brothers shit. Yeah, right it's now. like a lot of fighters are mad right now about this. Like they're mad, like flipping at like, 
Jake Paul, you fight me, and I'll kill you. Like I, I even was mad at some at one point there. But you know what? I'm. It's more at this point. It's more disappointing. It's, mm-hmm. I'm not mad about it. It's just what are you disappointed about? The fact that there was a time when fighters had to fight, like they had to fight so hard to get to the top, and most of them, it was only one in a million that may, would make it. You know what I mean? Guys would get killed on the way to the top. Guys would get brain dead on the way to the top. They they the uh, go they go broke because you you know it's tough. You don't make money till you get to the top. So like now there isn't all these guys that are working so hard. They just get thrown to the back burner. They never they never make money, man. Those guys just get hurt and they go and you never heard of them. Right. But 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 the guys like what's happening, you know, the, with the YouTube stuff. Like they don't have to put those years and years of sacrifice in. They just fucking, they just get the shot that these guys been working for. And it's sad that, like, you know, that these fighters just, they, they never get the shot. Yeah, it is unfortunate. It's because un- that's it's their disappointing. livelihood. That's their whole life. It's disappointing that's what the sport's coming to. Yeah. But I still got faith that the sport's gonna, that this is gonna be just a phase. Right. You know what I mean? I'm hoping it's a phase. Like, well, you know. at the end of the day, it could set up a Better, lot of I'm boxers. calling out Brad Pitt. What is it? I'll call out Brad Pitt. You want to fight Brad Pitt? Yeah, or... Uh, that would be pretty crazy. Who else? Who else would be a good fight? Maybe Liam Nielsen or What's whatever. This, I don't know. Are these yours? <laughs> no, they're, oh, not, they're not mine, no. I felt like this. Was, I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I just walked through the barn, and I was like, these have to be Ryan's. So what, for like what? you'd wear on a motorcycle. And they look like, like motorcycle yeah, or scuba I've gear. I've never seen those before in my life. They were on the barbecue. I was uh. like, these have to be Ryan's. So do you, but do, 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 you th- do you think, in a sense, like the amount of attention surrounding this right now could give boxers more of an opportunity <coughs> moving forward because they will bring a lot of their teenage audience to pay attention to the sport that otherwise wouldn't have watched boxing in the first place, right? So like, yeah, that's the way. Think after they're done doing their thing, they might just be used to tuning into that kind of excitement that they would just pay attention to whatever was happening afterwards. Well, that's one way to look at it, and that could happen. Or it could go the way where once the YouTubers are gone, they don't want to watch it the at fans all. go go with them. But they weren't real it's, fans it's to begin scene. with. No, this is, this is the first time. This could just time. be a weird phase where it's well, like it's not a phase though because celebrity boxing has been a thing for a long ass time. Dude, Eric Carter fought. Thing, uh, Lamar, 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 I saw that video. Yeah. Yeah. That Here's one guy that smoked crack versus another guy that no. smoked crack. Even Muhammad <laughs> Ali went up against a wrestler back in the day. But, well, uh, well, you know, what happens? If you look at the early days of Pride, you ever watch Pride? Oh, yeah. Do you know who Boss Rootin is? Oh, yeah. Who doesn't know Boss Rootin? Oh, I know. But, like, (laughs) Boss Rootin. Like, Boss Rootin was, like, this just mechanist. Yeah. yeah. At the end of it. Like, this guy that understood, like, the power that could come out of the end of a wrist. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he wasn't a guy that fucking punched you in the face. He was a guy that was, like, bah! And it looked stupid as fuck. (laughs) But he would hit you with the end of his wrist. Yeah. And and you know what the the crazy thing is? Like, a hand. I can't remember the, uh, the math. But it's like when you condense your hand into a fist, I think it's like five times more dense or something like that. So when you hit somebody with that, mm-hmm. there's that much more power be- behind the density of the fist. But when you're going straight down the, the wrist bone, there's no cushion of the fist. So that you know how a boxing glove, it has that extra cushion. Because like even if, like Mitch, you push your hand on my knuckles right now, push your, see how they compress backwards, now push on my wrist bone. There's none of that. But I'll explain you, something to you, you. If you palm strike somebody, yeah, it's insane. And Boss Rutten used to do that, and it was in a weird time in Pride where some of the fights were fixed. But Boss Rutten was also, also a killer. Yeah. And he would do these palm strikes. And I remember that. And the fucking life out of people. But the... I've got to correct you. The boxing glove, it's... So the pro boxing glove... When you put your hand, so first off, they wrap you, right? So it get wrapped in the dressing room. They use gauze, like, you know, the gauze you get from shoppers. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen you get wrapped up, yeah. So when you must know, maybe you remember, when they wrap, they wrap you all up, right? And then they cut this out. So I use, when I yeah. fight, I don't want, I, don't, I use the most minimum amount legal. Yeah. I get them to cut the rest off, right? Because mm-hmm. there needs to be a certain amount there. So they, they wrap it all up, cut that out. And what happens is they leave a bar right here, a little bar. Yeah. Did you ever hear about guys hitting each other, suckering someone with a roll of pennies in their hand? Mm. No. no? Really, yeah, no Put a roll of pennies in your hand and hit somebody? Or in, in high school, people in used to put school. a lighter in their the hand. The lighter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The lighter, yeah, yeah. right? You put something dense in so your fist. 
So you leave a little bit cushion. there. There's no, there's no, no what, cushion behind the knuckle. And then you, when you, when you put the, and then you put your glove, your glove on, right? And the pro boxing glove, it's 10 ounces, but the 10 ounces of padding is here. They push the padding down, so this is just leather. That's all you're hitting. That's all I'm fighting with is leather over my knuckles, man, like a leather mitten. And then there's nothing all inside here. Like you can see my hand when I flip the glove over. You see my hand. This is all empty. And I grab that, and it's like I'm holding lighters in my hand. So when I hit with the pro boxing glove on, there's there's a support right here. So it's t like I like I've been in over a hundred street fights, and I'm telling you, when you when I hit someone with a pro glove on, I can hit them full force, and I don't gotta worry about like if I hit someone with that. It's almost that. like you're holding a lighter, but made it a gauze. This can move around a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Your you knuckles smush in, your knuckles knuckles break, but with the pro boxing glove on, it's like you're wearing a cast. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I remember when it's I, brutal. I remember filming. Uh, I think it was the, was it Anaganish? We were in some weird ass random place. Yeah, some fight card there. Some, but it was, <laughs> dude, I'm sorry, <laughs> looking. I fought a Mexican guy. Bro, I, I yeah. keep forgetting to have him on. It's like fear and loathing in Las Vegas. He's like making that. very like very direct eye contact for somebody who has goggles on. I re I, can, I realized that a minute ago. <laughs> I still, I remember the first time I sat down across the table from me, I was like, this guy is going to eat my soul, and uh, I got goggles on, I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> there's no hiding, but, uh, right? But, uh, no, but, um, fuck, I just got distracted from what I was going to talk about. Talk about, talk about your goggles. Yeah, no, 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 not the goggles, the, yeah, the, the, the leeway in the hands. Um, I got to fucking pee. Bad, bro. Wow, how how deep are we in this right now? You know, we're, like, we're, we're, we're at two oh four. We're two oh four. Yeah. What's your longest podcast? We're two oh four. We're two oh four. What did you say? Go? What's your longest podcast? Like probably like, like two thirteen. Yeah, like we're almost yeah. touching it right now. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting, I was yeah, actually, yeah. but I had a question though it, uh, in terms of that. What I was talking about with like Boss Root, like he was very big on palm strikes, which really isn't. They call it a palm strike, but really what you're hitting with is the base of the wrist bone, and you're really just driving a solid bone into somebody's instead of a fist where there's some compression right like when you hit knuckles there's that bend we should and take that's a, like those one arm boxers they just stick the glove like guys fight with like lost hands and shit and they just stick the glove on their arm they're probably fucking cracking with them stumps you oh actually no this is th this is actually specifically <laughs> hey? what i was just, just getting about. hit by straight bone just that, straight stumpy bone that, with a glove that fight on that it. i was at in uh anagon anagon wherever the fuck it was at man I remember you I fought were, the Mexican guy. I wasn't. No, I think the Mexican guy was here. Wasn't Mexico. It? I fought a couple of them. I don't know. Yeah. Well, they're like jur Mexicans journeymen or whatever yes. that is. They're basically guys that are. What's that mean? They're just journeymen. They're just, just rolling around journeymen fighting. Journeymen is like a yes. professional boxer. It's like whatever, that, that dude. They win. A decent amount of money to. You know what I mean? If you're around. like Mexican, you're getting like six hundred dollars to fight. It's like based off your country's rate, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A journeyman. He's never going to be a world champion because he's just not good enough. He's just fighting. But he's good he's enough just to fighting. be professional and fight some guys. And if somebody's like a prospect and they're on the way to the world title, well, let's throw all the journeyman in there. Yeah. Get they away. have like journeyman well, actors and well, shit, too. Well, like people just show up and... Yeah, yeah, but that's what I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's guys that pick and choose their fights up the ladder. Like there's yeah. guys with like five times the amount of wins that you have that are like... They fought a lot of... Ranked behind me. Rank you know, behind me. I'm ranked way ahead of a lot of them guys, like 20 yeah, and all, 30 and all. Yeah, because you piss at a real fucking people. Yeah, you know with I mean? credentials you're not, and you're stuff. You're not beating the piss of some guy that's like 47 in Mexico trying to be his firm. I'll fight that guy, bro. $300. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll fight that guy. Dude. I hate that guy. I, 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 I meant to ask this earlier. <laughs> He's an idiot. There, one time I filmed with you in the, uh, I think it was actually named after you by your old name, uh, Thunder. Thunder? Boxing oh, club. Thunder Boxing there was Club, this yeah. this old guy that was there. Rudy. Old at Rudy, yes. Yeah, yeah. he still and, works with and, me. Okay, I was going to ask if that guy is still alive. Yes, yes. Okay. He still comes to the gym and train. That's, really? that's my coach and I'm in Cape Breton. No way. Yeah. I love that Yo, guy. Yo, that old but guy, he, is like, he, he still alive? He was like, <laughs> he's alive. I know, no, but he dude, the well guy's alive. like ancient. Like, he reminded me of... Um, Customato. Yes. Mike Tyson. No, actually, no. Fuck, no. I was thinking of Rocky movies. The old oh, guy Mick. Reminds me of Mickey? Him. Yeah. Mickey, yeah. Reminds me of that guy, like to a T. But I remember I was just You're like... You're a bum rock. You were like... Just, I don't know. I think I was filming you training. And I started hitting like the heavy bag because I was watching you hit the heavy bag and throw it around like it was like 20 <laughs> pounds. I was like, God damn. I was like... I remember when I used to kick at uh, the MMA gym that I used to train at when I, when I had done that. Uh, I used to be able to hit... Throw some weight behind it with my leg. With the kick, like, yeah. But I was like, what can I do with a punch? Mm -hmm. 
And I was like punching, you know, fucking around while uh, you were doing something else. And, uh, but he said to me, he's like, he's like, you, he's like, you got the right frame to fight. He's like, do you ever fight? And I was like, no, no I never thought about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I remember him saying that to me, but I meant to, I meant to bring that up. Like what it, he, he was a professional fighter, right? Or no, a no. trainer? Trainer. He like, never yeah, fought. Yeah. He never uh, fought. He just extremely knowledge. Knowledge. He understands knowledgeable. it. Yeah, but the yeah. best, the best trainers, usually weren't fighters. They're usually like Analysts. students and yeah, yeah, people right. who have a good understanding. Understand the sport. And understand the sport. Yeah, it's hard. It's very seldom that a that a fighter makes a good trainer. Very hard for a fighter to to teach young um, fighters for whatever reason. I don't really a, know. Literally, since the time that he ever said that to me, I was like, I I would love to like play with this but i feel like at that point i was too old to you like, don't you don't want to play no that's the you thing you don't want right? to play with that's it that's the thing you gotta go <laughs> yeah. all the way or yeah. it's, it's like, like all in or all well, i got kids now like fucking around kids. with that shit when you start Dude, playing with boxes even in, like like i'm not at an age where it's insane for me yeah. to think about doing that like i'm 23 right now mm-hmm. that would probably be the the end of the limit for me to start mm-hmm. Deont- if, deontay if, wilder if was, didn't start if, till if i was something. insane like if I was real good, like starting at twenty three, that's crazy. Like you started what? Like I mean, you've been fighting people since. Oh, buddy, you've existed, my first bro. fight was six years you old. Fought exactly. someone in the, he fought someone in the womb, bro. Exactly, you're, 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 you're that Russian kid <laughs> with the hat. I remember Chicken my first. Kid. I remember my first fight. It was against Brett O'Rourke. Shout out Brett O'Rourke, my buddy. But um, it was at the the trailer court, and I was six or seven. I don't know. You Maybe. sell many tickets for that? Oh, buddy, there was a whole lineup of kids outside, and Brett wanted to fight me, and he not and like. My dad was in the house, little trailer, drinking beer, or whatever, and he's like, "We'll go out and fight him." I was by myself. <laughs> right? How old were you? Oh man, I said six, but I might have been more like I might be exaggerating. I might my, like my dad would have told me go in the house. He says, go, "He says yeah, go and fight him." I was like, "Go all right. hot dogs." So I went out, and the, like, there's a bunch of kids, all the trailer court kids and shit. There's like teenagers there and stuff. You know, oh, it's like dude, when you're a you kid, right? Pressure. And I fought him, and he like pumbled me. Oh wow! And I come back way. in. I come back in the house. Had to beat the Jack pepperoni and I, out of him. My, my nose, I had a little nosebleed, a little oh. shiner, right? And my dad's like, "Well, how'd it go?" I was like, oh, "Well, he beat me up." We'll go the fuck back out there. <laughs> I said, "What? That's All right." So I, went, I went back out, and they were like walking back up. And I'm like, oh. "I'm I'm going not done yet." Go. My dad oh. said I have to come back out. <laughs> oh, dude, that's crazy. He's like, "What?" Come back, yeah, little kid smashed. Did he me win again? Up. Yeah, he fuck, beat me man. again. I go back oh. in the house. My dad's like, "That's the worst." He's like, "Well, you're gonna have to fight him again." It's like locking your keys. He's like, "Let car. me put this in the calendar." But like, he he, he uh, made. yeah, he yeah, I didn't. I never beat him. He could, I could never three-peat? get him. Do you get no? What's no? that? I said you get the three peat. You go back and. Hit him with the third time? No, I don't know. I don't think. I think you need now. to set that one back up. <laughs> I think I did. Try to, I think I tried to fight him a few years back when I was hey, thinking wait, of Steel City. Like, time get this like recently. He's, like, not, he's not your little buddy. Five not, like, years ago? Yeah. Like five he's, years ago. I'm not kidding you. This is how fucked up he's my not, head He's is. not your buddy that like I met with you at Mark's Barbershop that's like my size. No, this guy, he lives away now. Oh, okay. But, but he was five home years five years ago, no, years no, no, ago no, and I, I tried remember. to fight him because of that. Oh. He was like seven oh. years old, man. Oh. And I'm fi- and I'm at Steel City like drinking. You just wanted, you just wanted to peel that back a and little And I was bit. like, like yeah. we're going now. Uh. Five years later. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he what, was, he well, once he gets the no, that's enough. He wasn't yeah, down God for that. Damn. Fuck no. He's like, what yeah. are you talking about? We're not fighting. Have yeah, you ever yeah, had like... that? That have you ever had that where you're where you're like, you want to prove something from the past? Say like that. And I got like, hit. I got hit. I want to do this, and somebody's like, no, no, no. I got hit <laughs> by a car. I got hit by a car one time in uh, high school. But uh, he ran me over. The, uh, like intentionally. Oh yeah, he hit two guys. He hit me. Right. He hit me, and then he hit. Uh, or no, he hit my buddy first. Ran him over. That's and then insane. he hit me, and then it was like three years later I found him <laughs> at the corral. You know the corral in Sydney? I actually do not know what that is. But you don't know what that is? I don't. I've tried to learn. It's but gone now. It was like okay. a place that everybody used to park and hang uh, out, and this guy was like chilling. Probably like Bay video. <laughs> Similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little, little spot that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Do you have someone in the particular worries, that, does, their wait, ta- that, that does your tattoos? Me? Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, buddy, I got tattooed by this everybody. This was another everybody? question everybody. I meant to ask you, actually. Uh, w- last time that I was filming you, yeah. every time you won a fight, uh, y- your buddy in Sydney would give you another tattoo. Jeff Ramsey. Yes, Jeff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. have you gotten one more every time you won since then? Cause no. I think you were around, like, seven or eight. No. He, uh... He did a lot of my tattoos though. Like everything you see on my I, I, on my I, I body, you he were, did. I think you just guy. got that on your um, neck when when me and you were last speaking. 
No, Jeff Jeff did a lot though. He did like probably seventy percent of my tattoos. But I got tattooed by twenty four different artists now. What's the most meaningful one? You think? Hmm. Probably this one. Just got that was my last one. That's uh my fiance's brother's name. He died oh. last summer in a car crash. Oh wow. But that's my most meaningful one I would say. I was just about to say something, but that destroyed what I was about to say. <laughs> well it's just it's just oh. me like I was, about, about, to, meaning, I was right? about to say I got this one here. What's that? From my first guy. Oh, your kid? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's it, it, I like when that when the tattoos have meanings. That, I, 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 have, I, I wouldn't get one without it. it. The only ones I have are, are, are this is for us, me and my brother. These two are for us, and the only other one I got is for my first son. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get one for my second son <laughs> yet, but I got my third on the way. So yeah. Probably, <laughs> probably get them at the same Co- time. Couple new tats. Funny. He gets a, he gets a new tat every time he fights. You get one every time you have a new kid. I haven't uh, got one. I haven't got one lately, I'll, I'll man. I'm, I lost the. Uh, Dude, these glasses just the tattoo fever. Yeah. Not a uh, mine. I think that we're we definitely been rolling pretty long here. So anything that we should. Yeah. We should definitely wrap it up. I'm gonna pee my pants, but uh, I'm trying to hold it out till we wrap it up here. Got, are these are these are the new Puma kicks, but I decide I've never wore them, and I was like, this is the time to break them out. Okay, so, cool. um, yeah. But uh, any, is there anything that you want to touch on before we we wrap it up here? Anything? I know you said you have a new fight coming up, but you're not announcing that I yet. Can't, I can't. I can't announce like. Yeah. Well, I'll just say that it's early September. If. If the world is like, it's hard to say with COVID, you exactly, know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, if, if things are still opening back up and everybody gets vaccinated, whatever, then I'll be fighting September 11th, sorry, 200. Did you get the vaccine? No, I don't want to get it. If I don't okay. have to get it, I'm not getting it. I don't know what everybody else thinks about that, but. It's a different. Uh, if we, we keep talking about that, we'll be on for another 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's. Uh, I respect anyone's decisions. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, that's it. Thank you very much. That's there. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. What's the Instagram and all this stuff? If anyone watches, they don't. Uh, what is your oh, Instagram? Damn, At Ryan. I don't know. I feel like it's an underscore or something. I, See, I need it. to get in with social media more. Like I, I feel like we get we 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 run a couple I, social I feel media you campaigns. On that, dude. I, we'll I, it, up. it was so hard for me to get into social media when I was like younger. And then I got into a real. Oh, hard. it's Ryan underscore Rosicky. There it is. So follow Ryan. Look him up on YouTube. Um. You know, stay up to date with what he got coming up and shit. And, uh, yeah, good uh, good episode through the handshake right here, man. Appreciate you coming on. Yep. First guest ever. I'm gonna Thanks for having me. Yes, oh, it was, great sir. To see it was you an honor. Dude. You're the first one. Yes, sir.